this line, which really elucidates the whole scene, and that's the thing about prose, is that prose, as a form of art, tell you about the story through, like, wordplay, but also just helping you understand it in the same way that cinematography helps you understand a scene, even if it's not textual. Okay? Her round, heart-shaped buttocks stared at me like a reproach. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of your- What a bullshit move! I'm sorry, Kitty, you're not here. If you were here, we could absolutely make <laughs> Charlie's Angels name. What is our name and what are we doing here, Maria? W welcome to Unresolved Textual Tension. It's me, your host, physically in the space of my other host, William, but with our beautiful not in fantastic... the space not as important what even you hobo it's a crossover episode guys deal with it the book we're doing today is song of achilles by madeline miller oh, i remember miller. Good job. yeah i remember the name because she's now my sworn enemy <laughs> you are so ridiculous really quick before we go into this <clears throat> uh, i just need to say some stuff because certain people should not watch this video uh, or they should know what they're getting into because this book is beloved like it is uh, Princess Weeks, who I watched, talks about how she likes it um, and how she likes Cersei better. Um, it is very like a lot of book reviewers really like it. It has a it had a really big um, wave. I literally know someone who named their kid their middle name is Achilles because you guys of this book. All need to understand that I'm doing the "Hello Darkness, my old friend" meme while she's talking. Yeah. So just this book has a lot of love and I get that because I think for the audience that is going to like this book it is doing a lot of things well for them unfortunately for two out of the three of us not the not the audience uh and we have levels of the hatred scale. we on this end we have That's a very strong word William he really doth not like I the the amount of disgust and fury that welled within me when I finished the book last night it's again the the Iliad starts with sing to me O muse of the rage of Achilles and if Madeline Miller had written that part she would have been sing to me O muse of Patroclus being a doormat and Achilles also somehow being a doormat and their hollow relationship that's mostly just about being sad soft boys my rage is the one that the muse should be singing of my rage is the one that will be burned into the annals of history my rage is the one that this video will sear into your minds so that's one end of the spectrum i, I hated this book and then the other end of the spectrum you have katie sorry hold on miss alex knows that saying to me a muse of the anger of will grandson <laughs> maria <laughs> wait, yeah. wait click this one <laughs> if you come to the iliad soft boy high school musical fanfic you're gonna love you're it gonna love that's it. a thousand percent what this book is no 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 no. it's not that it's really not that um no high school musical was better you let her speak also no it wasn't objectively it was katie produced by the pretty pros no I, well I mean, I liked the pretty prose, but it actually didn't seduce me. It wasn't the prettiest prose I'd ever seen, heard, I suppose. There is other prose that I thought is more beautiful, such as in the uh, series we did just recently, which is the Southern Reach trilogy. I think the prose in that is far more beautiful than the prose in this. Um, but no, what I mean is, is this book, it's very specific. It reads like, in my opinion, a modern classical piece that is attempting to do what the older authors of our generations earlier have done, which is, you know, to take a classic story and retell it in a, like a more modern poetic sense. I think it misses the mark on expanding on things that it should expand on considering it as a retelling. And there have been many retellings that it should stand out by actually expanding on the things that it should expand on. Like Maria and I personally spoke of last night, but it is a good, it, it's a good book. It's just not something that I can see why people love it because of what it's doing. But I also understand why some people don't because it doesn't do enough. Here's the thing. I'm worried that my glasses are covering up how rage filled my expression is. So you guys in the chat, let me know if that's what's happening. I feel like sometimes men are supposed to be stoic um, and I don't want to be that today. I want you guys to understand the full force of my fury and rage. I'll say this I, I, and I will give this book props if you are a slash fangirl you will like this book yes if you have any understanding of the basic tenets of good writing from first principles that we consider to be good writing 
This book is, uh, oh, how to say, a, a butchering of the original source material, a butchering of all good taste. Oh my God, that's so melodramatic. I don't think you understand how much I hate this no, book. No, I know how much. It. Maria already told me how much you hate this book. And I understand why you do. It's because it's missing all the things you like in a book. So that makes sense. What I thought a couple days ago when I started it was that this book is not the best version of what it wants to be even. No, it's not. But the thing is, I realized that actually it is the best version of what it wants to be because what it wants to be is sad soft boy fan fiction and it is it's that. still not the best version of that i've say. had the best version of that if they had any backbone in this book then that would have ruined her just like i don't want to say fapping while she's writing this because that sounds mean but yeah, like it is. guys she's a classist she she teaches the iliad and this book has nothing to do with that this is really the high school musical fanfic of the iliad okay in between Katie, who- I don't love the book. I, I thought it was fine. Uh, so in between that and in between Haiti McHate hate over here- Rage. There, in between Rage Against the Song Rip of Achilles- Rip and tear until it is done. And enjoying it, uh, there was me, where I, I kind of, I was bored at parts. There were sections where, like, the prose can be quite nice, but then there were sections where it was little, like, like the dial got turned up too high, and I'm like, yo, we need to bring it down a couple of notches. You mean the one million times he describes the sinewy pieces of his fingers and wrists and... <laughs> or how in the first third he got a lot of feet. Like, there was a lot of descriptions of Achilles' feet. Or how, like, despite... Despite the fact that he's running around barefoot all the time, his feet are pink and uncalloused. Like, anyway, so uh, there's that for me. And I'm going to say something because I think it does need to be said. There is something that this book is doing. Well, I either need you to look off camera. <laughs> <laughs> I or can't. I, the, the rage in me. All right, go ahead. William, put on. Wait, wait, wait. No, I'm just, I'm just shoving him off camera. I'm just shoving him off camera. There That's we it. Go. He can make all the faces no, he no, wants. No, that was exile on my part. I'm being polite. Go ahead, Maria. Thank you. Just put on your third year bachelor's hat where you have to do an analysis of something on a academic level rather than on a uh, whatever while Maria speaks. That happens. would be less kind to this book. I The only reason I'm even slightly kind to this book is because I understand fanfic culture and the way and, and all of the tropes that go along with it. Okay, Maria, what does this book do well? Okay, um, so... There is something we have lost in, uh, I was watching Princess Weeks' video, which came out last week, which is really well-timed for reading this book. Uh, we have lost a lot of the original understanding of the Greek myths. Uh, for instance, Achilles and uh, Patroclus being gay was something that Plato was like, yeah, the mother was gay. You know, like, like it, it's something that during classical Greek, people were like, but he had, he had children. Maybe he was bi and he liked both. Like, this is something no. that people talked about. Isn't there a period of Greek history where men uh, saw other men as their soul partners? Yes, yes, that's, the... that's. Women because women were too shallow them. to have true emotional connections, yes, by the way. Yes, that's, okay, thank you. <laughs> I love this. This is so great. <laughs> and so that was the understanding of this myth there. And so there was discussion about the relationship because in the Iliad, it is not explicit about like, they're just like, there's that word in Greek, which means like bonded companions, like, like, like soul brothers, uh, uh, heckin' good friends. Uh, and that's what uh, Patroclus and Achilles were. But everyone around it were like, they was probably matching. Look at Judo Shrew, though. Like, that's a great phrase. The classic joke is Greeks invented love. Romans were the first to introduce it to women. <laughs> that's great. There was this understanding. But in modern I times, we have really twisted a lot of the myths. You know, our understanding of Heracles and a lot of the myths have been warped, number one, by, like, the introduction of Christianity, like when Christians rediscovered Greek myths and were like, oh, look, Hades is Satan um, and all of that stuff. But like, if you think about the 80s, 90s and the 2000s, we're never introduced to the fact that Patroclus even existed and that Achilles had a best bro, you know, it's barely touched on. So the idea of him being gay, this book brought it back into the modern understanding of the Achilles myth and the story around it. Which is really important. It's because even in a, I mean, granted it's a Hollywood movie, but Troy, I, out of fun, funsies, I rewatched it last night slash the day before. And I was like, as I was reading or listening to the book, I was like, 
Huh. Isn't Patrocles the one that, like, isn't his nephew in the movie the one that, like, goes in his armor? And then I rewatched it, and I was like, oh, yeah, they just made it his cousin. <laughs> it's because they didn't want to address the gay love stuff. Okay. 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 What Maria just said, the way I think of it is, and I think she has a point. This is a bit if, like, there was a great piece of art, right? And nobody really knew about it. I'm going to, I'm going to step somebody, off screen for, for Yeah. This. Well, you know, you need to do it, like, Okay. And if somebody had thrown soup at it, ruined it forever, and people were like, oh my God, that was such a good piece of art, and it was brought back into the mainstream, that's this book. One thing I do want to say about the gayness, well, actually, not just about the gayness, but about the the accuracy of this book. I actually don't super care about the accuracy of this book because this is a story that's been retold so many times. I read some interviews with Miller thinking that might solve some of my anger last night. It did not infuriate me even more. I felt it burning within me like a white hot rage or white hot fire, I should say. And so like, uh, and she talks about how there's like four different versions of the Iliad and she actually takes some cues from the Achilliad, which is an unpublished work. Um, that's the one where they say that uh, Patroclus is the same age as Achilles, whereas in the Iliad, he's actually a little bit older. So I don't actually super care about the accuracy. I do later because we'll talk about why that's a problem. But in terms of them being gay, that is just a thing that has gone back and forth. The original Greeks who wrote it yeah. would not have thought they were gay. The classical age Greeks were like, whoa, of course they're gay. But it's weird because Patroclus is not submissive to Achilles. He can like fight and stuff. That doesn't make sense because that's how the ancient Greeks saw gayness like again i don't actually care about whether they were gay or not like it's the story you're trying to tell um but like i guess yeah it's good people know they're gay now i don't know i the troy movie i enjoy so much more after having read this book because i realized it got the a bad troy rap. movie is so good i'm sorry it's old now it's ancient as fuck but like compared to this book it, you, you want to know why that movie is better because the Trojan War is the star, <laughs> or like yes. it, it's the setting is the Trojan War, and this the Trojan War feels like it's at such a distance. So here's m another thing that I have a problem with: everything in this book feels too distant. Uh, we're getting first person narration from the main character, which is Patro uh, Patroclus, despite narrating to you in first person the emotionality of what happens feels a bit distant, which means the setting feels a bit distant. And so when we get to the Trojan War, which happens about two thirds or halfway through the book, I think it's two Not thirds. Even. No, it's like two thirds through the book. Two thirds through the book. The Trojan War feels like such a diluted backdrop. In the sense, have you ever gone to a play and like they just had a screen in the background as the setting, mm -hmm. like and and then like they had like chairs and stuff, but you could tell that this was not designed. Or it, there's literally an entire type of theater going experience where the setting is supposed to be super muted and all the focus is on the characters. So unfortunately, we don't have that here either where it, again you feel very distant or at least I did I'm sure some people like sobbed at the ending but as you guys know I cry easy easy we've talked about it before I cry easy and the ending of this if it had gone the way that I think it could have or I, the way in which in which Miller wanted and I guarantee you there are loads of people who have sobbed at the end of this a hundred percent during the point where like they reconnect in, in the underworld like they have had that but I didn't have that so the characters felt distance the setting felt like we're at a distance and so it made the reading experience very ephemeral it there's such hollow characters too really quickly the problem is that miller wants to be mary renault which sucks for her and me because i read her book yeah very true she wanted ephemeral though she wanted to create that dreamy aspect obviously otherwise she okay i'm not even gonna look at you william um <laughs> she wanted to create that ephemeral uh feeling i've i mean i've written stuff where i have specifically wanted to create that feel the problem i have um just like i'm i'm pretty sure Maria has, although Maria says throughout, I think the whole thing, it, that ephemeral piece doesn't feel great. Um, but I think that when it switches to the Trojan War, there's a lot of character development and there's a lot of um, things that happen that we don't see. So when we do plug in to it after the 10 year skip that happens like out of nowhere, then it kind of feels unwarranted what happens like achilles is suddenly incredibly um prideful and selfish and arrogant and that's fine that can be believable but we didn't get led up to that and it kind of just feels like oh this is the time where he's going to be this way it's because it's canon so i'm going to insert it right here and just skip all over the good stuff 
of them creating a community and bonding. Like there is so much content that could have been explored and created. And honestly, this book should have been at least four more hours long. Or the first two thirds should have been shorter. I have a really um, good argument no, 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 for no, no. that. No, no, I, the only thing I think that could have been shorter, um, well, the, the, his time on the island with all the women was the time on the uh, island with the women where um, Achilles was, you know, disguised as a woman. That, yeah. we lingered far too long there. And then <laughs> I think the childhood parts, some of it could have been cut, but I think the Chiron and Chiron all the, I think is fine. Yeah, no, that's all great. Um, I also really wish that the exploration, and Maria will touch on this later, I'm sure it's because she mentioned it to me before, but I really wish the relationship between Patrocles and Thetis. Thetis, yep. was explored more because in my opinion, that relationship is the linchpin to this entire novel. Um, that's like the the like big climactic moment in the end is when she changes and she is a goddess that doesn't change. So I feel like that should have been explored way more. And then also it should have been expanded on. But overall, the ephemeral feeling of it is fine, except for when it goes hyper ephemeral and we just get a gigantic time skip. So I should, what I meant by ephemeral was not dreamlike. At no point does it feel dreamlike to me. It oh, it feels, feels dreamlike to me. It feels like by ephemeral, I meant fleeting, where like the stage backgrounds are just like, Hollow. But it, it goes hand in hand, though. The, if, uh, the the nature of it does create a dreamlike sense. It, for me, it just felt like underdeveloped. Like, like I, I couldn't get a clear picture of what the background looked like, of what the, the background looked, looked like. like, the culture looked like. I think that's the end result, a symptom of this attempt at it. Like, I think you could have written this. <laughs> in a dream yeah, like true. Uh, yeah you would have written this much better like oh my god i'm glad think so but no uh no no i can tell you if you want if you wanted an ephemeral uh slash retelling of patroclus and achilles katie it, with the dreamlike qualities uh katie, katie go back to the it. writing critique thing we did over each other katie, like that's katie so much closer it. already i because Katie has done dreamlike and ephemeral and it's beautiful. And, but because the, there's a vividness to it, there is a vividness to the description. I just think the a really big problem of hers is that she makes it saccharine and annoying when she keeps repeating the same descriptions. I will say, because I haven't really stated what my main problem with this, I've just let you guys experience my rage. Yeah, state it for the court. Okay. The problem with this book are many fold, but probably the biggest one is that there is no point. There is no viewpoint she is espousing in this book. Um, there's nothing she is trying to say about the Greek myths um, or this story in particular. And that makes the whole book feel very uh, pointless and meandering. And it makes a lot of her decisions kind of just random. The other problem is that Patroclus and ha Achilles are completely hollow characters. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Celia says, watched for a minute. Will was raging, had to drop out because of work. I come back. Will is still raging. Really quick, in Will's defense, our patrons, like 90% of them who read this, disliked heavily. Like, I'd say Katie and I are much more okay with this than our patrons. I would like to qualify that I don't like this book, but I I enjoyed listening to it. I enjoyed yeah. I don't. I don't, I would not reread it. Yeah, so, and, I, and to, I'm to highlight, because I, I want to, point this out because sometimes I think people watch this and think Will is just like an island of his distaste sometimes so I, I want to oh, highlight yeah. some of our patrons who are expressing similar so for instance yeah most of us are on team Will Celia oh I am raging too uh me when Maybe I first we'll read it reach Will's level yeah. at some so point <laughs> we had several patrons yeah. who read this a couple years ago who liked it a couple years ago like angry otter here me when i first read it katie's opinion me now will's opinion and there were several of them who reread this uh from when they were younger and uh, one of them in the discord i don't remember who you guys are sorry um i'm too big time in la now um, but um, they said that, you know, they had done a lot of the work originally in terms of putting in why Achilles and Patroclus were close and that this time they noticed that there wasn't anything there. And again, I think that speaks to the slash fanfic nature of this work. One of the things about fan fiction is that it's okay if the relationship is not well set up in the fanfic because the reason these two characters like each other was either set up in the original work or just kind of in the gestalt of the archetype of the fanfic. Like you've read other fanfics that explored why they like each other. So we can just be like, eh, that doesn't make a lot of sense here, but I'm informed by other the extra textual material. 
Whereas in this one, she talked again in the interview specifically about why she 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 was taken by the moment when Achilles rages for Patroclus' death and how he's just really extra about it. And she was like, this is kind of like my exploration of how did he get to that point? What did he like so much about Patroclus? Well, she did not accomplish that. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to highlight another comment from Lindbergh. I cry for anything. I cried during the Iliad, but no tear was shed for Song of Achilles because Patroclus never gave me a yes. reason to respect him and Achilles no reason to care for him. And so again, while Katie and I are are having these discussions and you see the the rage over here, please note there are are a team of our patrons who also are on that level of the spectrum. I think maybe a couple sprinkled. We're for thinking Katie about and. doing a class action lawsuit because so many of us were hurt by this. They literally there was literally a discussion where they were talking about like throwing her into solitary confinement. One it like some of the patrons because you know how Will has that whole thing where like you should be judged by there a, needs to be a bar association for and then writers. you're and cause some people were like she should be put under house arrest some people were like and so when i tell you there there has been uh, number one we have a patreon patreon oh it's yeah a great time there's Come discord join. um and it, listen there are times where within the discord people like the books and people don't like the books and there's discussions happening there and sometimes like i've liked the book and then the patrons haven't or vice versa where i've disliked it sabriel our, none of our patrons liked none it none of our <laughs> patrons really liked, liked it. Sa sabriel and, and will and i were like oh this is so the best good. <laughs> and so come join come talk about books we support independent yeah, journalism despite will being what he is within the discord he is very fair and uh like he part of this is an act in this case i i maybe not <laughs> I, I but sometimes he does ham it up i you viewers. know what it is is i express the rage within me in a way that i don't think a lot of people are capable I, I will say, again, to give the writer her due, I actually think she's a good writer. Anytime she's writing any of the characters that aren't Achilles or Patroclus, they like, they're like they good. Oh, they Jesus pop. Oh, was great. Yeah. Chiron was great. Even like I some of the lesser enough. characters. Yeah. No, we're like, see, that's the problem, though. It's And this is what I feel like I always have an issue with, with first person. I feel like many people suck at first person. And I apologize if you've written in first person. But it's just, it's really hard. And to create a character that is... Uh, uh, relatable to the reader if because it depends on what you're going to describe from that first person perspective and the problem is is Patroclus never has a personality until he gets a little older but then it's like one that doesn't make sense it's because we didn't get the build-up and character development to it all I ever got was Patroclus really 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 thirsty for some D yeah that's that's his biggest personality trait. Anyway, we're get, we're doing the thing where we talk too much about the the stuff around mm. it. I have a lot of ways in which I think this book could have worked better, but we will attempt as we go through the plot to talk about those things as they come up instead of front loading at the beginning. How so, does this book start, Maria? Uh, so again, this book is a retelling of the of Achilles' story specifically within the sphere of the Iliad. This is an exploration, a, a, an attempt at an exploration of what brings Achilles to the point of rage uh, uh, at the death of his bosom pal, uh, Patroclus. But and sometimes homies kiss. It doesn't have to be gay. <laughs> Parent. I actually don't think the fact that he rages out and dies like this doesn't mean they're gay. Sometimes people just have very close. If Maria was murdered in front of me, I would have been like fucking hysterical and I probably would have gouged out the eyes of the attackers. So but I'm also a little gay for Maria. So, you know, I'm kind of I would, too, but I'm kind of lazy. I'd be like, <laughs> no, I do a count of Monte Cristo. It's not enough to kill them. You have to destroy everything that they are. And more than that, you have to get them to destroy themselves. So uh, note to everyone, don't murder me. I have people. <laughs> If you can't Don't. kiss your homies, then who can you kiss? Exactly. <laughs> um, but also, I have no problem with the interpretation that they're gay as well. So, like, that's yeah. that's fine. Everyone, everyone's gay. For Maria, <laughs> so that's Max. <laughs> Circa 2010, I'm the original fan. I'm not gay for Maria. That's no. what's up. I Will met her and I was like, platonic soulmates. This is it. We're buddies. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you've never met two people that were just instantly <laughs> like, I really like you in an absolutely platonic <laughs> That's way. It's really funny because it was like that right from the beginning. <laughs> like, we, we clicked so hard. This is the backstory of Patroclus' story up until the Iliad. And then it's still, and then it talks about the Iliad as well. Yeah. So we start with Patroclus as a child. Um, and he's like really he was, weak and his yeah. dad doesn't like him because of it. He was a it. prince of Greece. 
and uh, his, but he was not like a heckin' good prince. And so his dad does not like him because he's weak and slow and he's no good, very bad prince. And then there's this whole thing where like Helen is like all the Greek kings and yeah, princes. Yeah, Pachulkas have- comes as a suitor for Helen for some reason. And he's 12. I like that though. I like that though because it shows how up, how insane his father is. Yeah. How, how blinded, because I like the one scene in particular. I really liked this one tense moment where um, I'm pretty sure it's Odysseus that says it too, but I'm not sure, um, where they're all gathered round and they're all suiting for Helen and also her um, sister, I think, and then potentially her cousin. But it, anyway, the point is, is they're all there. And then somebody's like, I thought Patroclus was here to gain Helen's hand, not you. And I was just like, but no, that really points out that he went there f- to take another wife, essentially. Uh, because backstory, uh, Patroclus's mama is simple is the simple word they use. Is the word they use, and uh, his dad was not super thrilled about that, and so he looks as Patroclus as if he is simple as well. Anyway, obviously Patroclus does not get Helen, but Odysseus kind of creates a scenario where he can walk away with Penelope. He does his Odysseus thing. Yeah. yeah he, he's like and clever let and Let me charming. tell you, imme- I, I heavily dislike Odysseus in the office. This actually almost aborted our friendship in the womb. Is in that the womb. Because we I think Odysseus class. is a piece of shit, but also I love him. In this book, I love him. Me and Maria took a classics together, and that's when I realized that she is an Odysseus hater for no reason. No, there's many reasons why. Plenty of reasons. What? In in the Odyssey, he is just... Odysseus is Loki, but less charming. I hate him being shitty to his wife after he, waiting for 11... Like, he, she never was with anyone. Oh, else. yeah, because he it. knows that. Because he knows that Why would he there. assume that? It's been 11 years. It's a long time. She has all these men hanging around. She could have been building a, a, an alliance against him. We, he doesn't know. She could have tried to use Zerpa's yeah, stone while he he's gone. he spoken to her first? He does. That's why he goes undercover. No, he's a dick. No, he is not a dick. He what is, is this? He's an absolute dick. Uh, oh, oh, he's a gigantic dick. Oh, my dick. God. What is this? Do you understand? <sighs> Okay. I hate, I, okay. Hate, we're not. No, okay. Wait, not, wait, wait. I do like Odysseus in this book. I find I, Pistolas, I, or actually bow of bow of Odysseus stolas. Stolas. <laughs> Let me tell you, we would die on that cross. And so uh, Odysseus is immediately presented, and you're like, man, look at this crafty motherfucker. This guy's smart, uh, and, and it's the most I've ever loved Odysseus before. He also really likes his wife, like the entire book, and I'm really about that. He's not I am to her and threatening to kill her, which you know. He Will, needed- I am sorry, he was an asshole. He was Penelope. not. He was not. He, he, he was. needed to, he went in there and he needed to know what was up. Was his kingdom no. being taken? That is no. traumatizing and it yes. is abuse for yes. his benefit alone. He should have come in, made sweet love to her and been like, I've missed What's you been so. happening, baby? I don't think you guys understand. He doesn't, he's not from that part of the book. He doesn't know all of the history going in. He has been traumatized. He was sexually assaulted. He had to ha- pretend to be no man. Oh, he was fine. He got attacked by uh, uh, Poseidon. He got uh, cursed by Poseidon. There was a Cyclops. There was this stuff with some druggies. The, there, he was assaulted reason, again. All the more reason for him it's to, been 11 years. to come to his wife's loving arms and lay his head down upon her uh, knees and have her like, be I like, don't think you I understand. You so no, much. no, no. He is not patrol because he is not Achilles. He is not a soft boy. He is cunning. He knows what's that up. That does not justify being a dick to your wife. He wasn't a dick. He, was he a didn't dick. actually kill also, her. Also, Odysseus is just also like. Hey, listen, if somebody holds a gun to someone and makes them think they're going to die, she was being a little dramatic. N- no, she was no, being no. a little no, dramatic. No, no, no. Gonna That's die. like a man. No, no. Oh, you are so. It's literally like someone going to war, coming back with PTSD, holding a gun out on their wife to the point where she thinks she's going to die, and then afterwards being like, "Oh, that wasn't that wasn't." A you guys heard it here. Maria's do. against veterans. Maria thinks veterans are dangerous and shouldn't be rehabilitated. We literally just said. That those kinds of veterans can be dangerous, and that is correct. And they need to, like, their the army needs to do a better job of taking people and transitioning. I them agree. And, I and agree with that. I agree with Again, that. Again, <laughs> that does not justify Odysseus being. Oh God, we have gotten so sidetracked. <laughs> anyway, Odysseus was really interesting in this. Anyway, uh, he that. ends up getting Penelope. Uh, Odysseus, oh. uh, Patroclus goes back. Uh, eventually, there's he's like playing with marbles or dice, and then this kid's like. <laughs> 
give me your dice. And Patroclus is like, no, they're my dice, even though I'm much weaker and smaller than you. I like that he stood up to, for himself. I have described some of my favorite books in this way. I am not being... Yes, like, this is how Maria describes. This is just how I describe. It's like literally one of the few moments where I liked Patroclus. There are several few moments. And this one, this one, I, I wouldn't say I liked, but it was fine. This is not a white supremacist sign. This is zero for the record. You can also just go like this for zero. The kid's like, give me the thing. And Patroclus is like, no. And then he ends up pushing the kid. The kid falls and cracks his head. But it's a problem because this kid was also a prince. And like, you don't you don't fuck with people's like uh, offspring slash their descendant. Like, or the people. Nobility. Who, nobility. Like, you, you don't do that even if you're nobility. And his dad gets really pissed off at him. And eventually later he realizes his dad's pissed off at him, not necessarily for killing the kid, but for admitting it and not just saying he found the kid like that. <laughs> and like immediately, because he doesn't, he doesn't even try like save himself. He's just like, yes, it was me. I killed him. Uh, so then he has to get exiled. So now he's no longer a prince of Greece. Also, there was a whole like uh, blood pact with the Helen thing where Odysseus was like, how do we know whoever wins uh, her hand? Everybody else isn't going to try fight her because she's so fucking beautiful. And um, yeah, it's really funny because I'm like, why are you retelling the Iliad? Everybody knows knows that part and then i remember that not everybody had the iliad read to them when they were like six or seven yes my mother did that i actually was looking for the copy of it and i couldn't find it but we still have it he's like oh well we should make a blood pack to make sure that whoever uh sh she picks will all be okay with that and that if, if she ever gets stolen or taken away all of us shall show up and defend her honor and bring her back to her husband. And so Patroclus at 12. <laughs> I live in a world of rocks. I love how he's like, he'll be fine. This is a land of dirt and grass. But I lied to myself. <laughs> I live in a world of rocks. I am a man of sin. It was really dumb. <laughs> that, no, that's literally thing where he's like, all I noticed of where I live was the dirt yeah. and the grass. And he's like, but I also forgot there were rocks. I we know. Do need to talk about how for the, I've heard that this book has beautiful prose. Beautiful prose. Its prose are actually, for the most part, fine. It reminds me a lot of A Song of Ice and Fire, where they're just not very noticeable. I mean, take a shot. I am. And then every once in a while, she's like, you know what? I am an auteur. I am a writer. Let me try to put in a really fancy simile. And it's awful. Awful. I will add a later point, quote, two lines. that One of were... which is not a simile. It is just awkward description. I know what a simile is. Katie explained it to me one time, okay, um, yeah. but we'll go. We're, bear in mind that's going to happen. Just b see it coming as like a storm cloud on the horizon yes. of bad prose. Now he's in exile. He's no longer a prince of Greece because he killed a guy because he forgot rocks existed. Um, and he gets uh, exiled to Thaya, which is a little tiny like kingdom in Greece, which is uh, Pel Peleus? Peleus? Pe Peleus? Yeah. Peleus. Yes, Peleus. Peleus, uh, and that's Achilles' papa. And uh, he explains like how Achilles came to be, which was Peleus and the gods were pretty bro, but all the other gods were like trying to get at Th uh, Thetis, who was a sea nymph. But then there was a prophecy saying whoever C Thetis' son was would be greater than his father. And so then all the gods were like, no, 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 I can't have my son being greater than me. Uh, we got to set her up with a mortal. Uh, and But they really liked Pe Peleus. So they were like, Peleus, we need you to like... Uh, uh, Great. SA, <laughs> yeah. great. This uh, sea nymph, she, like, when, just hold on. Like, don't let her escape. She's going to turn into, like, a bunch of weird animals. And uh, Peleus, who's normally, like, a really chill dude, and the book is, like, any other woman would have been really happy to marry such a smiling, chill guy. But... Of course, the woman he woman he raped, who also they say the reason that this had to happen was because despite the fact that they'd ordained, the gods had ordained this, uh, Thetis and the sea nymphs do not like mortals they would never ever couple with a mortal how dare you and then thetis had to be like like a wife for like a year and she was like not happy about it so she has developed a deep distaste on top of her previous distaste for humans but like super distaste for humans now he yeah. goes there he meets um achilles achilles is like I don't know how would you describe it? I, I kind of think of him as a himbo because Child he's just achilles is disengaged from everything while just you know like when you see movies or books where there's that one character who's like partying all the time but like yeah. never really making genuine connections child achilles is described that way where like he's vibing and like he hangs out with all the boys and all the boys want to be his friend because he doesn't have a companion yet 
but he never actually is making a genuine connection with everyone. He's just like, look at me, I juggle figs, or ooh, I play the liar. <laughs> he's like that one character from A Walk to Remember. He's any main male character in a unpopular girl to popular girl story who's super disengaged. He's the jock. Yeah, exactly. But but like the jock who doesn't even have a best friend. No, he has a secret artistic side and he's actually like kind of a sociopath. And he like he doesn't care about what anyone thinks and but he also doesn't even know that he should. Like he is just genuinely like just all vibes. Okay, so there's an interesting idea here of Achilles as a, the the god's son, as a son of a god who is disconnected from humanity because he doesn't need to be. He's like the ultimate child of privilege in a way. He doesn't even nobody sees him fight because he's so good at it. He doesn't even they don't even necessarily need to see it. So he kind of is outside of society. That would be that's an interesting interpretation, but I've oversold it a little bit because he's kind of like that. But then at other points, he then does care a lot about what people think about him. And there's never an explanation of how he got to that point. And also, I thought it was an explicit like a, a choice on her part to make him kind of a bit of a hollow character. Um, and and one that like didn't necessarily have a lot going on inside. But it's not I think that's just he just is a hollow character with nothing going on. And I don't think it's a deliberate choice. Yeah. Cause, Cause she doesn't do anything with it later. Well, I think it's really weird that he is like that. And then you have scenes like the scene um, with his fiance who gets murdered and she gets her throat slit and he's like in shock and awe and almost feels like he's like overly empathetic in that moment than he should be. So you have like, I don't even know if you really have many, if at all. I think that might be the only moment where that really happens. Or when he suddenly starts caring what everybody thinks about his like glory, where before, like he didn't fight. And you go from a character who won't fight in front of people to being so concerned about his image that he lets but we don't get people that die. Exactly. That's what's missing. Uh, and the thing is, I would have loved to have an Achilles who genuinely did not care what people thought, like to the point where Pat, uh, Patroclus had to doctor his image to make sure like, 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 I would have loved for Achilles to be like, no, I don't want to fight in Troy. That sounds boring. And Patroclus to be like, buddy, like we, you, you're, <laughs> we need, like you, you want glory. This is the only way you're going to get it. Patroclus should have been his, his agent. Essentially. Yeah, exactly. To because there's two ways you could have played this, and I mean technically there's three, but there's two ways you could have gone. You could have gone the disconnected. There's four ways you could have gone. Highlight and delete. One of which is Will's way, which is not the way we're going to engage with this as far as Katie and I, because we're, we're legitimately engaging with how you could have done this. The, her project in this book is to be, write about soft, sad boys. Like that is what she wants to do. So there are ways to make a retelling good and even the bare bones of this good and with very little that's the other thing is like with very few changes maria's told me about them like this book can function but like that's not what she wants to do she wants her like okay softball. but you know like maria and i were talking last night right and we get to this point where patroclus goes to this place and he has an opportunity to be something more than just the child who accidentally murdered someone and it's with chiron when he is offered to learn medicine we don't get any of his learning of medicine. We don't get anything that might have come of that. It would have been far more interesting if we built his personality around a healer. Yeah. And then also like a very like, how fascinating would it have been if Patroclus was less peace seeking and a little bit more like he wants to heal, but also is like very like quick to do things just like what he did when he was younger, when he like protected him, like, like some type of flaw. Yes. He doesn't have any flaws other than being a soft boy. He doesn't have any personality, really. He yeah. doesn't do a okay. lot. One thing Fact. Lindbergh says is Miller doesn't comment on Achilles' indecisiveness and lack of motivation drives. He just doesn't have any. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a commentary. I thought originally it was going to be a thing, but it isn't. And so, uh, yeah, you go ahead. Yeah. So that. I have the three, two or three ways you can potentially do this. One, you have Achilles as the completely disconnected so far above humanity that he doesn't see humans really as individual people. They're just masses. Um, and this would really fit with how he, Achilles is presented as a child to the point that he like doesn't actually care about glory. He knows he's the best. And so he just, he doesn't feel the need to prove it uh, to the point where Patroclus has to be the one to be his agent and kind of force him into situations and force him to do things. Well, there's and, a moment where he does realize what legend means beyond yes. living by yourself. Like there's character development there, which I think also, would be really interesting. Also, where are all their adventures? Like, yes. you know, like there are no adventures. 
They are, did some cross dressing. And that's but yeah, but that was like. It's, if you're in Georgia. <laughs> I like how it's been an hour, and I'm pretty sure we're only on chapter two. Okay, Maria, continue. Let's continue. So the other way you could have done it was have Achilles as bloodthirsty and, like, super into his image because he, like, have him be a bit more like his mother in that sense, where instead of being, like, disconnected, completely unconcerned with what people think, like, flower child, who is also a good warrior, have him really like where people do see him fight he does compete he goes and he hunts like he's he like and he's obsessed with this and then have uh patroclus as a softening like the place where he gets to be vulnerable the place where he gets to and then it gives and then maybe because he's such a killer and does all this stuff patroclus becomes a healer to kind of counterbalance but also to have a place next to him because patroclus knows in this book, Patroclus is not a warrior. In the original Iliad, he is also a warrior. Not as good, like nowhere near Achilles' uh, place, but he is like, and and he's, he's but he is. Uh, and so if you want to go where he's not a warrior, if you had really committed to him being a medic or healer, then that could be his way that he sees himself as being able to be next to him. And like, he is a counterbalance. Like, uh, yes, Achilles does all this stuff and it brings honor, but it does have like a human toll and Patroclus is trying to offset that. And I think either of those two explorations could have been really interesting. Um, I personally like the idea of him being just like, because there's a point in the book where he's like, Patroclus knows all the men and like can recognize them and knows their names. Yeah, and he does. And and Achilles is like, oh, they all look the same to me. And can you imagine? Because how they become friends? So really quick, he goes to Thaya. <sighs> um, uh, he's there and like everybody's into Achilles and he's jealous of Achilles, but also fascinated because he's like God, like half no, God. No, no, so no. He's really pretty. We need to discuss. Discu I know he's so into him. It's so. Well, like, you need to understand. <laughs> <laughs> or they could get him a pair of coconuts and really buckle down on being his patsy. <laughs> okay, you guys need to understand something about this book going in that I didn't realize, and I'm not sure why people might have discussed it. If you are looking for descriptions of how utterly gorgeous and beautiful a 12-year-old boy is, this book has got your back. There's a lot of them. Um, and I understand that this is from the viewpoint of another 12 year old boy, I think nine. This is filtered through Patroclus, but like kids at that age don't go on about how gorgeous another kid is. I don't even think kids at that age really, like I remember being that age. I don't really think I understood, more than like pretty and not pretty, I don't think I really understood physical beauty to that extent. It feels a very sexually mature description of his um, body. It's also just a lot. Like Oh, it's like so annoying. Yeah, beyond that, it's so annoying. Chapters where it is just like, let me lather upon compliments and descriptions of beauty. It's like having, it's like having mac and cheese, bacon, grease, a little bit of extra grease on there, a whole bunch of extra cheese, more bacon, nacho cheese. And tater tots on top with more cheese. That's what those scenes are like. It's too much. And it, it, what it does is it makes him seem too, because you there's a way to do this where you describe him where you're like, oh my God, he's just like unearthly beautiful. Like, like where, where it's not, like it, it doesn't come off as romantic because it instantly comes off as he's into him, but jealous of him at the same time, like that kind of place. But there, you could have just been like, holy shit, I didn't know humans could be that pretty. Like, are, are you real? Are you painting? Like what, what is that? The other that? problem with this is that it creates a, and cause this is just going to continue throughout the book of him thinking about gorgeous Achilles is, it is not based in the, I really like this person. So now I have begun to find them attractive. It becomes like, because there's no underlying reason that he likes Achilles besides this, it becomes extremely superficial. There is no other reason he is attracted to Achilles besides him being insanely pretty and also good at like doing everything because he's a god. I disagree with that though. Um, he he likes him, it's because he has this like kind of free spirit as a prince that he never had. And he's jealous of him at first about that, but then he finds it kind of like whimsical and kind of like sweet, I guess. He's a manic pixie dream boy. Yes. I don't even think no, he is. That's, I mean, he is, but I'm saying I don't think that's the basis he of teaches, his attraction. He teaches Patroclus how to enjoy life <laughs> and, and to enjoy the simple <laughs> thing and, and how to <laughs> and, and, and he plays. It's the, he basically was like a ukulele playing yeah. Zoe Deschanel. I like I like Angry Otter's comment. It's obsessive, which could be something, which is true, which is what I thought as well. But it never um, maturizes or fruits into anything. Yeah, and then we have Celia who says, "What do you mean you don't like <laughs> to read the numerous descriptions of Miller's?" Foot? fetish and Aki's especially because feet. it's not he did they don't even have the heel part in this book yeah. he, he just gets shot through the heart there's not even like ooh, that's shot a clever thing through 
By the way, uh, Maximilian Lopez, I want you to you know, unfortunately them. for me, at age 12, I was telling another boy how I wasn't emotionally mature enough to be in a relationship. But like, no, it's not that 12-year-olds are, I think actually he's like nine at this point, but like, uh, you don't wax lyrical about the the sensuousness of another person's body. Again, this would have worked so much better if it had been framed from the beginning as older Patroclus mm -hmm. retelling it to Thetis the whole time. No, that oh would have actually God! been- Oh my God! Yes! Well, yes. We'll talk about that and how yes. that's a significantly better. Uh, I think Patroclus' narration feels like a symptom of an anxious writer who doesn't trust that the reader got to the point that Achilles is super hot and Pat is really into him. It's also the problem that that is the only way Miller knows how to describe their attraction to each other. She actually has nothing deeper. There are no real scenes where they interact in like a funny way or you see their personality together. It it alludes to it, but it never actually shows you. It's yeah. not on screen. Anyway, so the two of them, like originally, uh, Achilles is just like chilling with all the other boys, and Patroclus is just like <laughs> sad boy <laughs> in the so corner. Bitchy, Again, it's it. literally like uh, a manic pixie dream girl. But then eventually, the manic pixie dream boy notices the uh, sad boy in the corner, and um, and also uh, Patroclus stops going to girls because he is now like a uh, foster son of Thaya. And so he has to go to like school and do drills and learn how to fight. And he keeps missing out on lessons. And so Achilles is like, I heard my dad talking to the teacher and you're in trouble because you weren't at lessons. And Patroclus is like, oh shit, you just lie to your dad and tell him I was hanging out with you because he knows because he used to be a prince that if the prince says it was me, I wanted to hang out with him. And uh, Achilles is like, well, that's not true. I can't say that. And then Patroclus is like, well, why don't you take me to one of your lessons? So then it's not true. If you tell your dad he went to lessons with me, it'll it, in part be true. And Achilles is like, bet. Okay. <laughs> like with that level, that's the energy. He's just like, yeah, okay. Like my only, my only uh, objection was about lying. And now you've made it where I don't <laughs> actually have to lie. Absolutely. Bro move. <laughs> Bro move. I'll do that. Yeah. He goes to one of his liar lessons and Achilles is like, like the best musician on the planet um and he's fascinated in watching him play but anyway and then he goes to his father and he's like me and this guy uh we're bonded companions now and his dad's like i've been begging you to pick a companion for years and you just picked this dude like why why and he's like i don't know and no 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 he says because he's surprising yeah what the fuck? He did one thing. In what thing. way was he surprising? I, I think it's supposed to be implied, but it's poorly done. I think it's it's supposed to be implied that uh, Petrocles uh, is just um, emotionally unlike the other boys his age, probably because of his trauma. Um, so essentially, he's just a kid with a lot of trauma, and Achilles is like, yeah, I like trauma. Nobody else is the sad boy. No, dad. no. Everybody else is like a happy go lucky boy. and happy go lucky. And this guy's a sad boy. Cat and says, um, also in their scenes together, it's always Achilles who speaks and Patty just sulks. This is actually a massive problem throughout the book is the Patroclus is incredibly passive, even in scenes where he should have some kind of an emotional stake. Uh, I love him because he's not like the other girls. Here's another one. Lindbergh goes, no, no, no. Pat caught the fake without perusing it. So also, that's I would too surprised. <laughs> Your yeah. pig is unbruised. This bodes well for the future. Achilles should have been like, I like this one because he killed a boy. That would be so much more sense. And again, it would have been amazing if Achilles knows he's going to become this big killer and that he was actually drawn to Patroclus because he heard he killed someone. And at this point, Achilles had never killed someone. And he was like, Yo, tell me what it's like. You killed someone? How did that happen? I haven't managed to do it. I haven't managed to do it at all yet. Like, how'd you get it? And then Patroclus to be like, no, that wasn't okay. And then it would have been a great chance for them to have like this discussion about like, no, 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 morality. And like, that's not okay. It could have like, shown that Achilles is disconnected a little bit from the world and then played into, because later Patroclus describes it as like, Achilles' body knows how to kill. He describes it as several times, which again could have gone back to kind of a disconnected Achilles from humanity thing. But no, uh, that's not what the author is interested in. Anyway, they become it has... friends. Oh, go. No, I was Sorry. just going to complain more. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I, I will cut that off. Uh, anyway, they become friends. You get a lot of scenes of them like hanging out. They go swim in. They like uh, juggle figs. Anyway, eventually there's a point where Thetis realizes uh, her son her, her golden child, who she wants to turn into a god, has now befriended a mortal, and she's like, no, no, no. Oh, oh, we also got to talk about how Thetis is super creepy in this book, and it's really I cool. love her. It is I really cool. She is the coolest character in this whole book. Her mouth being described as a wound, a bleeding wound, and black eyes, and pale, almost bone-chipped skin. 
Like, and I like uh, how when she's angry, her the the her, the redness on her cheeks is always described in a really cool way. Like she just she's a. She's and I like a, her voice in the audiobook. Yeah, her voice in the audiobook does a lot. It's it's cool. She really she doesn't feel human. You know how sometimes gods and uh, mythical creatures and fae can feel overly human. Oh my god, Edith um, is so hot in a really scary way. Pearl said, "I <laughs> I agree with Kate about Thetis. I think we all agree. Best I character." Think- best character portrayal. I think, she, portrayal I think she's one book. of the best parts of the book. Yeah, she is. <laughs> and and actually and for a while there I thought she was being underserved, but her decision at the end of the book actually kind of makes like I kind of I like that sense. development for her. Again, it, it should have been in a better book. Yeah. Um which you would think, "Oh, she wrote, the, the Madeline Miller then went and wrote a book about Cersei. I'm sure that's good." I've heard it is not. So so I I've heard both. I've heard both. I've heard some people like it even better than this one, and I've heard some people say uh, they didn't like it, but they didn't like this one either. So spoiler I don't alert: what I'll think about it. Um, but anyway, so Thetis is like, you cannot be friends with a mortal. You, he's he's nothing. You are everything. And Achilles is like, Nah, ma, I'm gonna do what I want. And um, <laughs> and so, but then eventually she's like, uh, it's like it's time for you to go. Uh, oh, so there's this point where Patroclus kisses uh, Achilles. Um, it's described like two bumblebees. Their lips are like two bumblebees meeting. Like boom, 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 boom. it was not good. I did not like. That. I, I, but Emily, I think it's fine. Not it's strength. supposed to be really awkward. No. I don't think it's supposed to be cute. Yeah. No, the pros are awkward. Not I don't them doing what the it. Pros says. I, it says that they're like bumblebees. Their lips, lips were like, like two bumblebees. bumblebees. It's one of these things where, like, we talked in our chat GPT video about like how the computer was like this kind of makes sense conceptually. Let me put those two things together. And you're like, but it doesn't actually flow. There's another part where she describes a, a Achilles's hand on Patroclus's hip, like a, a wet limp flower in from the morning. And you're like, okay, that kind of makes sense as a visual, but like, his hand it's is not like this. Like, no, it, it, it makes it really, yeah. there's a lot and of And it doesn't times quite work. Limber. Like it's almost there, but it doesn't quite. I like Thetis, but I hate that she's the keep that door open mom for most of the book. And it's, and it's the reason it feels like this is because we're not given a really good reason why she is so, like, I, we're just told she doesn't like mortals. Now, I think what would have made it better is if, uh, now I also want to highlight really quick, Angry Otter says, so we've identified the monster boyfriend, Thetis, yes. Look, as much as Maria is a fan of monster boyfriend, I am actually a little bit of a fan of monster girlfriend. I'm here for monster Even girlfriend. Even when the monster girlfriend isn't like hot monster. Yeah, the problem with Thetis is I think if we were told that for Thetis humans were basically like animals because the disgust she has is for mortals as like like just like gods and mortals shouldn't mix. That's her thing. You know, despite the fact that Zeus and all the gods be like mortaling it up quite like. regularly. <laughs> uh, uh, but Thetis and the water, the sea nymphs, they, no, 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 we don't. Do, and so I think it should have been described as if to the nymphs, humans were like animals. They're like cattle. And so, of course, you don't sleep with your dog. Like, and you don't love it like that. It is a servant at best. And I think having it where her, it wasn't just like, don't sleep with him, but just having like a legitimate disgust. Like, like, and also, why do you like, have that dirty mutt in your sheets? Ex- and, but also like your father, a mortal man griped me at like that worthless dog and you Barbarian. choose you choose them over the destiny I have picked for you yeah the purity of what I am and what I want to construe for us and I think that would have just been better because I think having her go from that like and having it being so intense and not about like them sleeping together like I because there's this idea that she's like against them romantic I just like the idea of him caring too much so, about any mortal I never caught it as her not liking that they're romantic I just caught it as her not liking but it, it makes no sense that he would, okay. she would make him sleep with Daydamia. Yeah. Okay. So there's the weird, this is where we have to talk about how this book has a weird world building problem when it comes to gayness in that, okay. In the, in the first paragraph of the book, it says um, something about how like wives aren't, it's not pretty for them to be pretty or whatever. Cause there's always uh, servants and serving boys that, you know, you can sleep with. And I was like, okay, so this is a culture where like homosexuality is accepted. The book then never mentions anything gay till the end of the book. When Briseis is like, well, sometimes men have wives and lovers too, but for uh, the solid chunk of that, the first 90% of this book, Gayness is never talked about from a world building perspective. And it's weird because Patroclus keeps acting like he doesn't want people to find out that they're gay, like they're they're like lovers. Lover. 
Thank you Why for being more eloquent. So weird. I just couldn't think of the word. <laughs> okay, you're the you're the one who's always like. And then they were swimming through the ocean. Okay, I'm also speaking. You're you're here. You're influencing me. Oh yeah, that's okay. that's what it is. Um, and so like, there's a weird kind of way in that the culture feels like she just transplanted our modern views of homosexuality, where it's kind of like. People accept it, but also it's there's still sort of a sig stigma about it onto that because Patroclus keeps acting like there's a stigma around it. Like yeah. he doesn't want and there's uh, this like, idea, father to know. There's and, this idea that like uh, when you're young, it's OK to like have a male lover. But once you're older, you should definitely be into women like like and Odysseus even says you're a bit old for that gentleman. And you're like. But we've literally established that men could have wives and male lovers. Like, so why is that weird? But is it, it weird because it he hasn't doesn't been have established a wife? though? It yeah. hasn't. Like nothing in this. It's a real lack of world building. And it's so much of this has no world building. Where you don't get a distinct sense of the culture. You don't get a distinct sense. So, like a huge thing in this book, like for the Sorry, Sorry. I know. Really quickly. That's a good uh, comment. That's a good comment. Ferris says, "I never believed Patroclus was from ancient Greece. If someone told me he was writing this on his Tumblr blog, I'd believe them." <laughs> That's really true. That's so it cool. is. Um, and so that's a huge problem is that you really don't get a sense like th that like glory for glory's sake is like a huge thing in, in ancient Greek myths. Um, and and so like the idea of like doing anything for glory, but like it's weirdly missing from this. And so when at the end Achilles is all of a sudden like glory for glory's sake, fuck everyone. You're like, whoa, buddy, you have never. Uh, where did that come from? But anyway. So uh, event he kisses uh, Achilles. Achilles kind of initially bumblebee, but then pulls back. And then he's like, oh, no, I screwed everything up. We can't be friends. Uh, Achilles goes and sees his mom and comes back and is like, I'm going to go study with Chiron in the, the mountain. Chiron, now. who's an actual centaur. That's another problem this book has is that it's too, like, mythology is just normal. Everybody knows about gods. God children are a thing. There's a centaur. Like it, this book would have been much better if it had done the thing where it's like, is Achilles a god or is he just really good at fighting? Like if they had held back on that a little bit, like is Thetis a god or is she just kind of a crazy or, woman? Or I would have, I see the thing is, I would have liked the opposite direction. I would have liked it to feel more like, I would have liked the gods to be more present because there are moments where like the gods show up and it just feels really out of place because they're barely like they're talked about. <laughs> There's but they're really, this part this... where Apollo starts trolling patrol. Like, I love that scene. So, no, for me, I was like, what is this? Yeah. It just totally didn't fit it completely ruined the tone but was very objectively funny it is i i laughed but, but oh man the tone up to that point just got trash yeah miss ali snows it says it's it was this weird middle ground and it really is because in the actual iliad the gods are like doing their like we're squabbling siblings thing about and whose I, heroes get what i wanted it to be like uh um grace of kings for like the gods are just randomly like being like, hmm, like how, <laughs> how will this progress? Because there is this part like when after Patroclus dies, where like you hear the gods saying like, he cannot take Troy now. Troy is not meant to fall yet. And I'm like, yo, that's cool. We could have been having this the whole time. Uh, but there's a reason it happens at the end and it, why it doesn't happen earlier. But anyway, uh, he goes off to see Chiron and um, Patroclus goes deep sad boy where he's like, <laughs> I ruined our friendship. He's gone from me. I'll never see him again. It's and then so he's stupid. like, and then he's like staring at the road leading away from the keep of Thaya. And he's like, I'll just follow him. And like unprepared, he doesn't pack anything. He doesn't pack like food, not an extra pair of clothes, not better sandals, nothing. He, he just starts running. Yeah. I can I can believe this scene, honestly. I the problem is because we don't get his thoughts on the matter. It actually makes him feel very passive, despite this actually being an active yes. thing. It's one of the few actions he makes, but it feels passive. And it feels like he's doing it because there's a point where he also runs after Achilles, but it's not him running after Achilles. It's him going to rescue slash find him in a like, like I've got to so he's been taken i need to nobody else is dealing with this i need to deal with this and in this case it's just like uh -huh, my best <laughs> friend left uh -huh. i mean look i'm not gonna lie that entire scene of him uh like after achilles leaves to go to chiron i was thinking like what a weird series of events he just took him as his like closest companion one of two things has to happen either one he's expected to bring him with him or two 
he's supposed to be fulfilling another role. He's not just going to linger randomly with no yeah. responsibilities. And I think it's because Thetis didn't want him to follow Chiron. I mean, yes, but again... It but just, then the, the king him- should have been like, yo, so when my son returns, you need to be ready to be his, like, proper companion. So and so we need to train you and da da And here's your training. And then he goes up to Chiron at a different point. Once he feels a little... Or literally just have him be like, no... I I want to apologize to Achilles. I want to fix this. He's my best friend. I I can't imagine he's happy with this. Let me pack my stuff and I'm going to go and fix this. But it's not, it's literally just him in sad boy crisis mode and then running out of an anxiety attack. Anyway, he runs, he, he gets to a woods. He doesn't, he's like, oh my God, I have to like sleep in the woods and there's nothing. And maybe there's bears. And then Achilles pops out and is like, yo, you came, I've been waiting for you. And I'm like, you couldn't go back and fetch him. You (laughs) Like, and then Achilles is like, you didn't bring anything? That's odd, my dude. Like, even Achilles was like, <laughs> of course you should have come. Like, why didn't you pack anything? And then Chiron comes, and at first, uh, he's like, oh my god, it's a centaur. But then Chiron's like, let me take you to my Rose Quartz uh, cave. Uh, and I really liked Chiron, and there's a scene at when they first get there where they're looking at his walls, and it's got all these, like, weird uh, tools on it, and Chiron's like, these are the tools of surgery, the healing craft I have. And I'm like, oh, they're going to make Patroclus a healer. That's amazing. That's what I thought too. And then nothing happens. They tell you they both kind of learn healing craft, but you don't see it. And then there's this point where Chiron is like, okay, guys, let me see what your, uh, you know, uh, weapons wise and I thought like ah oh, this is great he's gonna get trained they're, they're both gonna get trained by uh Chiron on like some warfare and stuff like that and then uh Achilles shows him all the stuff and he's like I get the Achilles part where he's like I have nothing to teach you that's actually really cool and it really fulfills that kind of prophecy that he's the best ever but I Petricles, know, but he's, but he's no, no, no. at least been shown how to use a sword hold it properly Petricles, yes he basically is like uh Patroclus you'll never be great but you you could be a competent warrior do you want to learn and Patroclus is like nah nah bruh I'm not and, interested and the thing that. is I would have preferred that because there's going to be a point where Patroclus needs to like do shit and i would have liked if he had a decent basis again not amazing but a decent basis with which to pull this off instead of it just coming out of nowhere um the other problem with this is that achilles i get you know whatever you want him to just be good at fighting but him not having to learn how to fight makes him feel like even more of a passive character because he doesn't need to make a decision he doesn't need to work on this it's he's already perfect at it which again if you're going to explore the hollowness of how that makes your character passive that's fine but she doesn't the same thing kind of happens with patroclus where he's just kind of like man i don't really want to like it, it it should be a decision but it actually just feels like him going with the flow yes like oh achilles not gonna get lessons on this i'm not gonna do it either and why do I need to? I'm never going to be that good. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, it's Which just is really- dumb. The fact that Patroclus is not good at fighting like he is in the original. One thing I said at the beginning is that I don't necessarily care about the historical or the, the mythological accuracy. accuracy of it. People just tell what stories they want to with these characters. But the problem is that the book is really weird in what it decides to pick and choose. So this is a major variation of Patroclus's character. And then later, everybody else kind of has to stay like the falling action of this book doesn't work because it takes too long because she needs to continue telling parts of the story that originally happened Uh, the 10 years thing i think is bizarre like why would you keep it being 10 years yeah it's so bizarre it took me out of it completely why didn't you like he she could have just made it like a four-year war like if you're going to play with the history like you if you're doing a retelling uh it's i know why she did it i did too because why? she wants to write about soft, sad boys. And that is no. the main project of this book. No, 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 why would no, no, why no. would she need to keep it 10 years? No, 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 I know exactly why she did it 10 years. It's because she didn't want to put, like, I don't know if she literally didn't want to put the work into it or she didn't realize that she should have. But the point is, is that she said, she's essentially saying to the readers, they lived a good life. Like, they're, she's they, trying to, no, 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 no. But did they? She's trying to give the things that they shouldn't have had together together and like fan fiction it without actually putting in the development 
and lo- like giving in the, the oh slow blow so of she's it. saying that they were able in those 10 years and it, this is informed to build a community have a life develop a routine and, and oh, build I without even putting totally the work in to describe it <laughs> yes without yeah, okay. putting the work because that is they, they get all those women they like they do they celebrate the festivals they start building like like they that, have a life together it's supposed to show that they had a happy life together and so that way when the death comes it's even hor- worse but it's not because we never get any of the we, we don't that see are supposed it to- yeah exactly so um really quickly ferris says i secretly think miller skipped over 10 years because she didn't want to include troilus and apollo for achilles because it would make him look bad. I don't know that story, but actually, yeah, it's again a place where she. What is that? There's some story with him and Troilus. I don't know. I Who's only know. Troilus? The, Wait, I don't know the myth. Ferris, uh, describe it really quick. Yeah, there's a, a Shakespeare play called Troilus and Cressida, and I know that version, but that doesn't really have. I don't think that's the original one we're thinking of. Uh, Ferris also said the fact he's not good at fighting doesn't make the climax make sense. People believe he's Achilles in his armor because. He's that good, and uh, sad to see Patroclus going out like that. That Patroclus who killed twenty-seven Trojan men in a single line. Yeah, the thing is, at the end of the book, he's gonna be like, "Oh my God, I'm Achilles! I'm gonna go into a blood rage," and that would make sense if he actually had a basis for of- fighting versus just a random like, "Oh, I'm gonna kill people now." Thing. It, and it, it would have like I even would have liked it if if it had been like if she really did, wanted to commit to this, where like a god like gives him like to make this work i'm going to allow you to be a good killer like if there was some explanation then him just getting really lucky with shit but anyway so uh they they stay with chiron they hunt they learn forestry which never comes in yeah, that was weird they ne- it never comes back because they're not in the forest they're on the beaches in a plane at troy they do all this other stuff uh and it's just about it's it's a sl- kind of slice of life slow chill like like uh boys sitting skipping stones on the river i was expecting a different path once i hit this part of the story wait a second uh ferris says achilles chases troilus with the intent to <laughs> him troilus is a son of priam, priam and a prince of troy troilus flees to a temple of apollo and it implies mutates in sexual <laughs> Ooh, the Greeks were so what? hardcore. Again, we're going to talk later too about how the book is like, ah, we're going to change the things I want for my sad gay boys. Also, really quickly, earlier, Limburg had said, I thought that once Achilles left, finally Pat would get a life, become competent, and they would reconnect later. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I, I thought, thought as well. Too. And I think that would be more engaging. I Agency. Also Look at Paris at the bottom again. Apollo is upset that Achilles did this in his temple, which is why Apollo helps Paris kill Achilles with the arrow. I mean, all the better for Achilles to fucking die. It's because that's some bullshit right there. And that's the thing is, they they make Achilles so toothless in this until all of a sudden he becomes a dick at the end. And that's <laughs> why, makes no listen, sense. listen, if you have Achilles as the disconnected above humanity not caring what people think and not thinking there are any consequences to his actions and patroclus has to be his conscious and lead him the right way um and then you can have him do terrible things like this but have patroclus still love him because of other things that you need to establish um and and try like again directing him in the right direction but have him be a complicated complex character that does shit you know uh but that's not what we get anyway uh eventually uh his father is like yo the trojan war is starting you have to come back from your happy times with chiron also they have sex for the first time while hanging out in chiron because eventually achilles is like you know my mother can't see us up here (laughs) and they're like (laughs) (laughs) I I really hate the comparison, but also like the comparison, but in a gross way, between male and male sex and male and female sex in this book. It's so gross, but in a great way. The Trojan War is going to start. He goes back and his dad is like, I would like you to fight. But then uh, Thetis kidnaps him and everybody's like, what the fuck happened to Achilles? And uh, our boy um, Pat is like, yo... Peleus, where is Achilles? And he's like, I didn't tell you this, but his mother took him to Skyros and is hiding in there. And Skyros is where people send all of their daughters uh, to go be fostered. Uh, and so he goes to Skyros and there's the princess of Skyros and her name is Daedamia. And for a moment, you see a fun version of Pat because he goes, he pretends his name is son of Chiron. This he's was the like, best part. He's me. like, I'm here to court you. And like, he like he's doing things and he's like, he, you're like, oh man, he's going to go rescue Achilles. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Like, this is some agency on his part. And you could have really 
if you wanted to set it up in the beginning where he made the decision to chase after Achilles because he was panicking and needed Achilles versus, oh, now I need to go rescue Achilles. Achilles needs me. That would have been such good growth from him, but that we don't have that set up. But anyway, and so Daydamia. I like Daydamia. I love say Daydamia. It. I did too. She was, she, was, she was a normal fucking character. She just felt like a character. You know, like, like she's got flaws. She's going to have reactions. She's not going to have the best reaction. I do like that she constantly called Achilles not Achilles, but by his female name. Yeah, Pura. Uh, but anyway, so she's like, uh, would you like to see the dancers of Skyros? And he's like, yeah, I'll see the dancers. And then it's her dancing with this one girl in particular, and they're like having a good time. And uh, then uh, Patrocles, uh, Patroclus goes up to the one dancer, and it's Achilles. And he's like, yo, Achilles! And Achilles is like, ah, the Patroclus! And then uh, Deidamia's like, Pira! And it's just this funny, because it would have been such a great meat moment to be like, Achilles! Patroclus! Pira! <laughs> like, the other problem with this is that Achilles has no problems dressing up as a woman, which in ancient Greece would have been even weirder than now. Like, again, you gotta remember the ancient Greeks were like, Odysseus is like cunning? Like, what's up with that? Yeah. And then the Romans were like, really, what's up with that? So, but the problem is, again, Achilles, and this is gonna become a problem because his big decision in this book relies upon him being part of this culture is that Achilles has no respect for cultural norms whatsoever. He's like, yeah, I'm a woman. That's cool. I don't well, care. That's dope. And I like that. Again, but then why does he care about glory? Why does yeah. he pick a short life with glory versus a long, happy life. Because exactly. like, why would he care? If, if exactly. He has shown to not care about yeah. any societal norms. Did you notice that the author took the, I don't like to say the lazy route. I do. But let's say the lazy route. I'll say it for you. Did you notice towards the end where um, Pat was take, making, cho like when he took the armor and dressed up as Achilles, it is described as he did not really, it wasn't really himself. It was almost as if somebody else had come through him and made these events happen. Like it was foretold and therefore it was forced to happen. I hated that. Yeah. Well, okay. So the thing is that in Greek mythology and culture, there's this whole thing about like whether you're responsible for the things the gods make you do, because the gods will just sometimes make you do things like Heracles killing his wife uh, and stuff like that. And that's like a more complicated thing. And so I think in the original Iliad, the gods make him do something like that. Like, and that's what she's referencing. But A, that has not been established as a part of this world that the gods will make, like the, in terms of world building. And thematically, it adds nothing in terms of you do need to interrogate that as yeah. an idea. Yes. All of that. And it's so annoying. But we'll get to that part of the story. Can we talk about that really gross sex scene now? <laughs> the one that Will hates. I want to I wanna highlight this. I really thought the princess was going to be some super genius who was puppeteering her old father, which would look cool. But no. Me too. But not I just another that. pathetic one. And I really, really had been hoping for that because she is initially presented as like this kind of powerful and smart and then she just gets completely defanged and i would have liked her to be like less so in love with achilles than like no i want the son of achilles like i don't care fuck off like go be your happy two yeah. little sad boys yeah. but this is what i want i want my child to be this thing and she should have bought thetis for the child and and instead she's like in love with mm. achilles even though mm. like she knows that achilles was forced to sleep with her because of his mom in the original story he grapes her by the way which is again another thing where miller is like ah i'm gonna change the things i want so i can have my sad soft boys and make him not want it but it happened anyway yeah there's a problem with bi erasure here which is that like I, Achilles is at the least straight because he has sex with a bunch of women in the original tale and then probably probably I, bi probably again well, but also I don't bi because if he if he went after Troilus 100% bi 100%, right okay so 100% and then in this book he's Achilles like ooh it was oily and like he doesn't and then later with Perseus he's not going to be interested in her at all so bi erasure not good Madeline Miller it would have been I really wish they had been bi I mean that was something I told Maria I wish when we get to the part with Perseus and stuff, I wish that they had become a threesome. Ferris says, Patroclus is shown in protagonist descendants possess his body with the spirit of the comma. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. And then um, Lindbergh says, she was presented as a girl boss, but Miller realized she might outshine the golden boy, so she had to be made sad and pathetic. pathetic. Okay, so basically yeah. what happens is, yeah. uh, Daedamia realized, like, uh, Achilles is like, I'm Achilles, which Daedamia knew. Uh, that it was obviously because Thetis had been making him sleep with her. Um, 
And so she, but, and Thetis also married them. They are technically married. Um, and at first Patroclus is like, you're married and you had sex with this girl. I'm so upset about that. And like storms off. And then Achilles is like, it meant nothing to me, babe. I was forced to do it. Which makes what, a, what Patroclus is about to do hysterical. <laughs> and there's no fallout for Pat. There's none. But anyway, so, <laughs> um, and the king is like, yo, listen, you have to stay here. I told your mom. And so like, if, they just pretend Patroclus is uh, Pyrrha's husband and Deidamia is really upset because she was in love with it. And like, and Achilles, because he doesn't understand how a human, cause like there's literally points where Patroclus is like, maybe be less like completely dickish. And like, cause like he doesn't even see Deidamia. He literally, she's having his child and he, he doesn't realize she exists, which again, if we had presented him as a character who legitimately doesn't care about other people and doesn't know how to connect with other people would have been fascinating. Sally Snow says, bro, we only, we only did, did it twice, twice and, and it, it was, was greasy. greasy. I had problems with vaginas before this. And let me tell you, this <laughs> did not help. Vaginas are terrifying when described in the right setting. And in this setting, it is right. And it is right. Full of horrific it's not let me tell you she like i it makes me like miller do you do you have the same issues i do <laughs> is that why you're writing yeah, i'm pretty sure Deidamia's vagina was oh no 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 oh, no, oh, oh, oh. we're gonna we're gonna, gonna do the line because yeah. it is a terrible line but anyway um so uh, patroclus is like oh man he's so mean to Deidamia, and she's really not having a good time and eventually Deidamia like summons patroclus to her chambers and is like why does he love you you're ugly and like i'm better than you and like this doesn't even make sense you're not even an attractive and you kind of suck uh, and the thing about this scene is that it's the one that made me go wow patroclus is such a passive character because he says nothing in this scene he does. she has a lot of like she's berating him she has a lot of emotions and he's just standing and there it would have been great if he was like I also don't know why Achilles is into me. I think about it. I, I like if he had a complex about why Achilles chose him and then like he could like be like, you're right. I have no fucking clue. I got lucky and I'm completely aware. But no, he just literally stands there or he's not like, you know, I have lived my entire life with him. You met him a minute ago. Of course, I'm going to be closer to him. Like, of course, like we've something. known each other. Like say he says something. Nothing. He says nothing. And then after berating him, she like he like she hugs him and then he pats her back and stuff. And then all of a sudden he's like, and then she touched me and I knew what she wanted. And I let her lead me to the bedroom. And I made noises because I knew she liked that I made noises. Literally, she so leads him weird. to the bedroom and he just goes. And they have the sexings. And at first he's like, uh, she didn't seem that into it. And it felt pretty decent on my end. It's just weird because it's like, why are you doing this? You have never expressed interest in her or in women at any point during this book. He wanted to comfort her, but it doesn't come across well. But then he's also like, yeah, and, I, and then I got into it. Pat just fell dick first into Dodamia with no idea why. Again, he's such a it's passive so character. Passive. There's nothing going on with him in this entire book. It makes me rage. And now... During this scene, we have to say two of my favorite lines. I'm not going to have Maria read them because what I've noticed is when Maria reads things, they always sound better than they do in the actual book. Like she'll read things and they- I can read it. I'll make it sound Oh, no, no, worse. no, 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 no. Again, remember this book is known for its prose. It's known for being beautiful. There's so many Tumblr posts being like, oh, this line from the book. And this is the line that I would like everyone to not be able to forget. Her tender skin parted, weeping slow, warm drops. Weeping. Warm Weeping. drops. That happens. I no. don't want to. That's a no. terrible description. No, it's Weeping so is bad. sad. It is. A, Weeping, it's a you horrible know what, description. Do you know what weeps? Sad people and wounds. Yeah. Yeah. And the vagina is a wound. We're in gay world. We're in like hyper don't like vagina. It drops and warm. I have like that's a of, weird one. I have one. enough issues with vaginas. And this just. It's, again, one of those things where you could see conceptually what she's going for, but it doesn't actually work. And then... Paris! If Patroclus falls into a woman but only makes a few sounds, does it really happen? <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay, and then, again, this is, a compl this is supposed to be kind of a tragic, complicated scene of intense emotions. And catharsis. after the catharsis, she's not happy about it. And then afterwards, as she's leaving... We get this this line, which really elucidates the whole scene. And that's the thing about prose is that prose as a form of art tell you about the story through like wordplay, but also just helping you understand it in the same way that cinematography helps you understand a scene, even if it's not textual. OK. Her round heart shaped buttocks stared at me like a reproach. 
How does it stare at you like a robot? Why did he need to describe? Why was it staring? A bug can't stare. That's actually really bad prose. It's so bad. <laughs> and, you know, it's so bad. Both those things happen a couple of minutes audio uh, yes. within each other. And you're like, did we have a, what happened here? What is this? Anyway, <sighs> this happens. He leaves. They never talk again. And she's like, that I'm going to go. Scene. and I thought it was pointless. It is. It is. Nothing happened. So really quickly, because I actually was going to brought this up, but then Lindbergh brought it up. Take a shot, guys. Honestly, I get really strong Cersei vibes from A Song of Ice and Fire from Pat's shot, description of a vagina. But worse, because Cersei's description of a marriage swamp speaks to her character. Pat has no character. So actually, Martin gets into trouble. A lot of people are like, oh, God, he's terrible at writing sex scenes. Um, and the thing is, he's often trying, not trying to make the sex scene sexy. You know, sometimes it's really stupid, like Jon Snow inventing a sex act <laughs> out of the blue. But no, for example, uh, one of the descriptions that he gets a lot of shit on is um, when Sam is having sex, he describes it as a, what is it? A pink mast, I think he describes his dick as. But the thing is that, the thing is that Sam has insane body dysmorphia and has always been hated for how fat he is. And he hates himself for how fat he is. So describing his own dick as a fat pink mast actually makes sense. Thirsty when she's fingering, uh, 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 what's her name? She describes it as like a mirror swamp. And it's like, yeah, she's she's not really into anyone, but um, uh, oh, Jamie. Jamie. Like that actually makes sense. It would be gross. Yeah. This is not really supposed to be like that. And also butts can't stare. It just doesn't make and, any and at sense. And boobs kind of have eye-ish things. So yeah. You can have like, a, it's like, not even she, you, like you she's like the eye contact. Okay, so oh, yes, Odysseus that. shows up and is like, Oh, I caught that it was Achilles through a way that actually happens in the myth. Yeah. And he's like, Achilles, come fight for us. And Achilles is like, why? And then Odysseus is like, because I know a prophecy that you will either die young and everyone will remember your name or you will grow old and no one will remember your name. And Achilles is just like, oh, bro, that's tough. I really want everyone to know my name. I'm going to go to the Trojan War now. Yeah. And again, Out of the he blue. has never cared. It's not like he wanted to go fight for the Trojan War previously. It's not like... He 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 literally has not cared when Chiron asked him, do you think you'll fight in people's wars? He was like, I don't know, maybe I'll see what I want to do. And then all of a sudden he's so concerned. And again, within the mythos of like the Iliad, glory is pen like you can get no higher. It is the Any greatest Greek thing. culture. So it made sense, but we have not been presented that. And he has been shown to not care about norms. So for him suddenly to go, I don't care about having a long, happy life with Patroclus, even though that is all I've cared about doing up until this point. I'm going to go die young. Well, and the thing is, it actually is worse because in the Iliad, it's like, do you want to die young and glorious and remembered or do you want to die old uh, and happy and no one remembers you? But like in this case, it's like we have built, or the author has built for like 900 hours Patroclus and Achilles' relationship and told us that is very close. So he actually needs a stronger reason to make Been this decision than in the original where you're just like, yeah, dying old sounds lame. And yeah. this one, it's like, I could grow old with the love of my life. And yep. like, that's not a thing in the original. So you need to make it a stronger reason. And she makes it a significantly weaker and, reason. And fighting has never like, in this version, Achilles has, like, he's good at fighting, and he's just like, yeah, I'm really good at it. Like, I've always been really good at it, but it's not like he loves it, and, like, he's always practicing, he's always doing the things, and, like, he's devoted to it, and he's like, well, I can't die without ever getting to do the thing. He's literally not cared about it. It's just been like, it's like when rich kids don't care about money. Lindbergh said, I thought Achilles would pick Pat. It would make more sense with how the book had gone. And so what I had expected was that Achilles was going to choose Pat, and then Patroclus was going to be like, no, this is you like, yeah, why exactly, would, or something else, like something, like some other way they get invested in the plight of uh Troy and they genuinely want to go, like, or even if Patroclus is like, you know, maybe we, as long as we don't kill Hector, like, we we can't just ignore, or someone is like, we can't just ignore the plight of Greece, like, I don't know, exactly, something. it was not persuasive, or if Patroclus was going to be held to the bond where people were like, no, we are forcing you to go, Patroclus, and Achilles can choose to wait it out, but he's like, well, if you're gonna make Patroclus go, I can't let him go by himself, I yeah. have to go. I thought that was the whole point of bringing it up. Otherwise, otherwise why he's bonded, why bring yeah. Up, bring up the bond, like, I, there's no reason to. I like the idea that Patroclus knows this prophecy, but Achilles doesn't. doesn't. And so he yes. doesn't tell Achilles because he knows Achilles would choose him over glory. But then in his heart, he really wants glory and he doesn't want to take that from Achilles. And then there could have been Achilles tension about it. Because he wants the glory. Oh, 
That would have been great. That would have been fucking great in the end. Or, or to find out, like, maybe halfway through the Trojan War, Patroclus finds out that Odysseus and everyone else knew about the prophecy, but brought Achilles into this, and then he's mad at them, and then, like, how dare you not give us the- Angry Otter's comment is just pure trill. Like, it just- Pat, 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 Pat be the one be obsessed with this. This will happen actually like, Pat later. Pat can't have his own glory. He's not good enough, but to want it for Achilles. And later, and then that would actually make sense why he doesn't mm-hmm. want Achilles to sit in his tent. Go, he literally takes on the role of Achilles yeah. to give him that glory. And that's why he dies. Yeah. And later on in the book, it's going to be really weird because like they're just going to be sitting around for 10 years being like, oh, but he needs to get enough glory if he's going to die. And it's like, and it's it's just it's so it's weird. so confused. And I don't and like I agree. Amber, the more we talk about it, the more I realize, and the more I read angry orders comments, yeah. the more I realize that it just it's it's such a loss of opportunity. It could have been Pat uh, that had him go to Troy because he was one of Helen's yeah. suitors, and Achilles went to protect him. Exactly. Again, great, Lindbergh. I maintain them going to Troy makes no sense in this book. I would have loved. What would have their life have been like? On, like, what if they had washed up on the beach? They'd gone on a voyage somewhere else, washed up on the beach of Troy, and, like, got brought... Like, she could have played with this. It didn't have to follow the Iliad She as much changes as so did. many things that why doesn't she change more? Yes, especially because you've presented him as a, an Achilles who we don't necessarily believe would go do this. But anyway, he's like, no, I want glory over a happy life. So they go. And then like, there's the whole thing with Agamemnon being like, we have to go all to this beach first and everybody needs to be here and everybody needs to bow to me. And Achilles being like, I'm here and I'm going to fight for you, but I'm not going to bow to you. And like tensions. And then they go to Troy and then they start fighting. And Achilles is really good. And again, this is the first time in his, in his entire life he has actually fought against another person. Do you both think that she is influenced by the movie at all no she's a classic she professor was. no 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 i think she was somewhat maybe i mean it that or the stole. movie was so fucking good that it mimicked the original one of the two i remember the movie not being liked when it came out um i, I was loved it. i was really young and i was like oh, it's not just the lord of the rings that can have sword battles and that was my feeling about it pretty much as a child and i haven't really gone and i, I rewatched it because briseis as actress is really pretty um, and also, let's be fair, Brad Pitt is gorgeous, even if he's way too American for the role. The thing is, he's actually gotten better looking as he's gotten older. Yeah, it's weird. And same with same with what's his face? The guy who plays know. Odysseus in the... Oh, uh, Boromir? No, no, no. The guy who plays Odysseus in that Charles American Smith. retelling of the Odyssey. Oh, brother, where art thou? Yes. The no. guy who plays the Odysseus character. Uh, like he, he also has aged. He looks better as he's gotten older. No. Brad God. Pitt in Troy, very hot. Brad Pitt in Fury, insane. Even, even, I can tell you right now. I can tell you right now. Brad Pitt eats healthy. Well, not just that. He's wealthy. If you are wealthy, yeah, no, you that's... can afford to look good. Yeah. And to keep your body as beautiful. But not and you always. Have less Kardashians look like shit. Yeah. Yeah. But it depends but... on how you engage with it. But anyway. So Achilles has his first battle. He does really good. Uh, originally, um, they are just doing where they're raiding and uh, stuff. Murdering and people and Petro- taking women as, yeah, Petro- as slaves. I remember the scene specifically described where uh, Achilles describes to Pat that he shoved his spear through a man's cheek and came out the other end with flesh. And it's funny because again, he has never been interested in killing before. And so if it would, it would have, but he also like, doesn't actually, it's described at one point that he actually doesn't like the killing itself. He likes like the, the challenge of when there's so many men because he is so unchallenged all the time. Um, and like that's- Whoa, 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 whoa. Lindbergh says, I never got the attractiveness of Brad Pitt, so Troy didn't do anything for me except I love the tragedy. Lindbergh, refund your Patreon pledge. No, <laughs> no, 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 Lindbergh. No, Lindbergh. Lindbergh. We love you. Don't, Don't listen Lindbergh. to him. We He's actually being a hobo. Love no, so he knows. Much. She knows I like her. <laughs> Don't listen. You have always really great picks. Anyway. <laughs> So they do the battling. Uh, Patroclus uh, originally goes out in some of the fights when the actual war starts, but eventually he's just like, nah, I'm going to stay home and does less and less and less and less and less um, until he's doing that. And then eventually uh, he starts helping out in the, um, what is it called? The healer's tent. The healer's tent, which again, if he had been trained as a healer, if we got uh, scenes of him doing healing prior to this, like it would have been great. That would have been awesome. But no, we get none of that. It's just like him being in the healer set. Also, they, they're they auctioning women. And like the first woman they capture is Perseus. And um, who in the original story is an, a sex slave that 
Achilles takes as his own. But in this one, because we can't have again, the rating Jesus up until this Christ. point has been this like, is wild. The Greeks are not good. This, it's a cultural norm that they just kill people and it's not great. And then instead of committing to that, it's then like, oh, but wait. Achilles and Patrolkas, they're good dudes, and I don't want to ruin my sad soft boy romance. So uh, Patrolkas gets Achilles to take Briseis as to save her from the other men, and they're not going to do the sex, and I'm going to take care of her. And it's like, okay, again, why you you keep parts of the story that don't really work a lot? Like there's going to be a fight scene with a river god later that you're like, why is this here? That made no. They really felt so out. Of uh, it was like what? The reason she decided to change this is because her project with this book is not to recontextualize this myth in any way but to have her slash sad boys that's it that's all this book is this book is just wish fulfillment and it's infuriating it's infuriating yes uh continuing so uh they rescue a bunch of women it starts with perseus uh perseus and uh patroclus end up becoming friends they like do stuff together they hang out they get a butt ton of other women eventually as the war goes on and on and on like the other women start like becoming friends with the other myrmidons which are the uh thea thea's um the fighters they're, they're the fighters the soldiers from yeah they're the elite. um and uh, so some of them go off, like instead of all being with Patroclus and Achilles, they in their woman's tent, they start going off and like meeting other guys. Kids are being had, you know, they're building like forges and like basically like setting up a life uh, in Troy. Um, and so like they, they get multiple women at this point. But the problem is this is told to you in summary. You don't see this. You don't get like to feel you don't get to none of the other women have names or like them having children is not significant like it's not like patroclus is like wow look at life happening in the midst of this war like no. it's like life goes no, on no 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 she put that in there but not enough to a point where it would matter to the reader it was but because it was in summary you don't see it it's just summarized it, 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 they basically go and then we were there long enough that eventually the men fell in love with the women and the women fell in love with the men and they started having children and then we started building shit like that's how it's described to you it's not in scene it is in summary there's also parts where like agamemnon is being a real dick all the time and also has a little bit of a jersey accent for some reason in the audiobook, yeah. <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> Like, it's just a weird thing. And, like, at certain points, uh, Achilles has to, like, outmaneuver him with, like, winning the loyalty of the men. And you're, like, they're, like there's a subtle thing where he talks in the Agora to get the men to fight for him versus Agamemnon, who doesn't know what he's doing. And you're, like, but Achilles doesn't understand cultural norms at all and does not care. How does he know how to outmaneuver also, Agamemnon? how does he know? He's a great fighter, but why would he be good at the politics of that or yeah, warfare? It doesn't or make like any sense. Under he wouldn't. That would all be packed. And if yeah, Pat if was Patroclus involved, was like, "Hey, you need to do sense. this," and like Patroclus had paid attention to this stuff because when he was a prince, he was a normal prince, and his dad shoved statecraft and Warcraft into him. But no, we don't get any of that. That's not what happened. Uh, no World of Warcraft. Eventually, um, Warcraft Agamemnon takes a uh, prize that they had looted from a temple of uh, this one the god. And um, the prize uh, is a woman for the yeah, record. It's a woman. Maria often says prizes when she's talking about women because she objectifies them. I don't do anyway, this. I would have called her a woman. And uh, he uh, essays her slash grapes her. And then eventually her father, who is the like head priest of this temple for this god, comes with like so much gold. It's an unreasonable amount of like a, a normal war prize would not be worth as much. But also you're not supposed to take people from temples. Like it is bad to like take them as war prizes from their like, like it's not a good thing. And so everybody's like, Agamemnon, why would we do that? That's no bueno. And the dad comes back and is like, I'd like my daughter, please. Here's all this gold. It's well worth more than what she's worth, but she's worth it to me. So please give me my child. And I'm Ag Agamemnon's like, no, it's mine. I And it's Apollo. But uh, that's the god that they pissed off. Uh, he's, he's like, like I'm mine. a bad dude. Can you not tell? I don't respect women like a patrol I'm, I'm, and Achilles. I'm going to I'm going to keep her. And then like as the priest walks away, he's like shaking his fist at the sun and like, oh, enchanting. And you're like, oh, God. So then a plague happens and it's a really bad plague. And it's for sure a magical plague, too, which is annoying because, again, I feel like this book would have been better if it had pulled back or either gone more with the whole god thing. Yeah. Annoying. Yeah. Like, it needed Agreed. one or the other. It's a weird middle ground. But anyway, so the play Agreed. comes. It's super bad. And eventually, Achilles calls everyone to the uh, Agora for a council and is like, yes, Agamemnon, we agreed to this, to do this. <laughs> and then let's see what your uh, the our religious leader says. And the religious leader is like, um, 
Apollo's mad at Agamemnon because of what he did and he needs to return the girl. And Agamemnon's like, absolutely not. I am not going to do this. Screw you. And Achilles is like, but I really think you should, Agamemnon. Like, we got to do this. And Agamemnon gets really pissed. And he's like, if I have to do this, I'm taking your prize, Perseus. And everyone's Everyone's like, like, what? Why would you? Because a a war prize is a symbol of your honor and glory. And so to take another man's war prize is like high insult. And but like nobody else is like, Agamemnon, that's too much. And also a prize of 10 years. Yes. At this point, it's been 10 years. And again, I would call her a woman, but you guys can call her a prize. I understand that this is feminism. (laughs) Okay. So in the comments, they're talking about how much they describe Achilles's golden mane. It's yeah. so fucking annoying. Yeah. Again, there's so many physical descriptions throughout the book that just don't stop. And you're and again, it makes Patroclus just seem it's not just incompetent writing. It makes Patroclus seem like he's shallow. Achilles is like, if you take uh, Perseus, then I am. I'm not going to fight in your wars. And then they go back. Oh, I, I was saying Perseus is in love with Patroclus. And there's like a scene where she's like, you know, men, a lot of men have wives and and lovers. And did you never want kids? And he's like, did you want kids? And like, yeah, obviously. She just, she, that's why she asked you, you son of a bitch. Because like, he's literally like, and then I realized why she asked me that question, and I felt dumb. And I'm like, yeah, you dumb dumb. I would have liked the idea that he could, like, he has this intense love that if it had been built up better and, like, we had really been exactly. developed. Exactly. Um, that he loved Achilles, matter. that he loved Achilles, but that he also was like, you know, I, I could have loved her. You know, my, well, I could. Well, also there should be something outside of a relationship. But that's the way it comes across but it never gets exercised in a way that matters. But how could this but be wish fulfillment? But he also never fulfillment? says he loves her. He's just like, I could have kids with her and I could be happy. Like, how could this be the ultimate wish fulfillment? How could this be the ultimate slash fic if there was anything that existed outside Lindbergh, of her relationship? Lindbergh, Pat almost reads as a self-insert because he does nothing yet everyone uh, wants him. Oh, a thousand percent. He is a, a, a reader insert. He is the wish fulfillment of the slash fans who are uncomfortable with their own sexuality so they project it onto hot men. Agreed. A thousand percent. I'm far enough into the video to say that and I stand by it. I stand by it too. Yeah, that's what happens. And a lot of women are disconnected from their sexuality so and are mm-hmm. and and like women as sexual objects so it's much easier to be in the position of a man who wants sexually than to be in a right, woman that wants sexually. they can want things without exactly. slut family. No, I understand. Exactly. I anyway, understand. Anyway, uh, so uh, and but he's like, I still really like you as a friend, and she's like, fair enough, bro. I understand you really like Achilles. I wouldn't have kept you from him, and like, yeah, you should do that. You know, Achilles is gonna die, but buddy, uh, like that's I, the other thing is they're really chill about Achilles maybe dying one day. They just know I, it's gonna happen after Hector dies, so he keeps not killing, killing Hector. Hector. And it's funny because at one point Odysseus is like, you've dragged this war out for ten years because you didn't want to die, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> What are you doing? Uh, and I what like do you mean? Thing. What are you doing? That makes complete sense. Nah, no. you, you made a choice. You made a choice to die in glory young, and yet you avoid it at every single turn. Achilles being that selfish within the context of this book makes sense because he's super selfish in this book. Yeah, but the thing is, his selfishness doesn't make a lot of. There's no cultural reason for it. There's no background. I, I, just, I agree. But I'm just telling you. But like, if you made the decision to get glory, the ultimate glory is going to be killing Hector. Like there's no one else on the Trojan side to kill that would get more glory than Hector. Anyway. Look, no, the author is showing her hand in those scenes. When Agamemnon goes, I would like- Perseus. Perseus now. uh, Achilles is like, no, I will not fight for you anymore. But he's also like, yeah, take her. Because then when you defile her, I can kill you. And everybody will support me for killing you. And everyone will think you suck. And Patroclus is Which like. Which is not the case. Yo, buddy. That's what? You're going to let her be used in this way? So you get to kill Agamemnon with no. Like, and everybody gets to think you're great? Like, that is super fucked up. Especially because I know all these men because I have to like handle their goyers. Yeah. Patroclus is like, no, I am not going to let this happen. So he goes to Agamemnon and he's like, by the way, if you do anything to Perseus, it's going to give him the ability to undermine you. The men are going to hate you and he will be able to kill you. And your uh, advisors are probably into this because you know what happens if you die? They get to take over. And Odysseus is a crafty bitch. It's very cunning in a way that 
Achilles has not been portrayed as. No, so no, it makes it's totally... no sense. It's also recontextualizing a part of the Iliad, which is okay and good. But then this is the only time she does it. It's a, it's very weird how again she wants to be everything that's not Achilles or Patroclus. She wants to be completely played straight as it was in the original. And then to them, she's like, "You guys are my special people." And it just it it a it destroys more of the realism of the world because this is clearly author fiat. Um, and it also just, it's so annoying because like it feels unfair to the other characters. It really does. Anyway, so then Agamemnon's like, thank you for telling me. And so he starts te- treating Perseus really well. And then uh, Achilles is mad for a second at, uh, and also Patroclus oh, yeah. was this mad for a second. This is the closest to a fight they ever yes. have. Patroclus was mad at Achilles and that's why he did this. And then he comes back and he tells Achilles and Achilles is mad at him, but then is like, you're right, I was being a dick. Like, Because at first he's like, how dare you betray me? Also, I forgot to mention, when Achilles finds out that Perseus is into um, uh, Patroclus, it's kind of implied, because it happens right before all of this, that that's why he's like, yeah, fuck Perseus. Like, I, like she wants my man. And like, again, Women why would foodies. you care? But it's not that. Like, again, he has been shown to be so disconnected. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, she might like you, but you're never going to pick her over me. Like, I'm Achilles. Like, that would have made so much more sense as a reaction. Like, oh, that sucks for her. Like, I was watching this show called Ted Lasso, where this one character kisses this other character. And like, when the boyfriend finds out, he's like, oh, that's going to be so awkward for you guys now. <laughs> Like he doesn't even he's not even yeah. remotely upset about it he's just like oh no he's gonna feel like shit and oh that's gonna be so awkward and she's like i know that would be great like that would have been awesome because like that's who he's been described as where he doesn't care and like he's like he's never had to be jealous he's never lost anything he's never had to compete for anything why would like one girl being like i'm into you patroclus and patroclus not picking her be like anyway um, so oh, hold on limberg had a good comment and now we're getting some vague attempt at dubious morality, like she realized Achilles lacked up. Yeah, this is the part in the book where it was like Patroclus was beginning to realize that there was a hollowness to Achilles, but like, it's not really... So there, there's a problem where it hasn't been set up correctly. And there's also a problem where this will go nowhere. This co- argument between them will not be resolved. The book, Patroclus will die and still really, really, I mean, spoiler alert, and really, really love Achilles in death to like the the whatever. But like, they, he he never get he never really deals with the fact that Achilles was okay with uh, Briseis Briseis. dying and, and letting all the men great. die, yeah. which is someone and people he loved. So Achilles was the most selfish fucking person on the fucking planet. And he still loved him. And it never gets dealt with. They never get past and this point never, in the relationship. He it's never has like, to eh. like come to terms with that or be like, okay, I'm going to have to love him despite these flaws because I just... Like, oh, this is interesting. Ferris says, uh, yeah, interestingly, that. they argue in the Iliad because Patroclus was such a good warrior that Achilles fears he'll steal Achilles' glory. Again, the author was not interested in... She just wanted her sad Why did we soft boys. Why Patroclus? Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, this whole thing happens. Eventually, Achilles is like, you're right. I, I was a dick. I you are better than me. I shouldn't have done that. And he's like, okay, but then the yes. Achaeans are losing a lot. Oh, uh, so, uh, Achaeans, by the way, is the Greek are the Greeks. I just so, call them that cause I read uh, He won't fight. So despite the fact that he now can't, he's not going to kill Agamemnon because Agamemnon is, is going to treat Perseus. Well, he refuses to fight and the Greeks start losing like mad losing all over the place. Um, and they're just dying and dying. And, uh, Patroclus is like, uh, buddy, are you going to fight? And then eventually Odysseus, this other guy uh, whose name starts with a D that I've forgotten. Diomedes. Uh, Diomedes. And then um, uh, Phoenix come. Phoenix is the guy who raised Achilles. He's the old, uh, old, old advisor. And he comes and he's like, yo, there's a story that we used to tell all the time that you obviously were not paying attention to about this one guy who got insulted. So he stopped fighting to the point where his people literally lost faith in him and had to beg his wife who he really loved her name is cleopatra i remember that um to uh get him to fight and he eventually does it for love of his wife but by the time he does it so many people died and people know that he only did it because of his wife that they still don't like him and he's forever sullied and his glory is just destroyed and patroclus is like oh he was actually telling that story to me i'm cleopatra i don't love how this book treats no masculinity and gayness but anyway um it's just uh, it, it uh, it's not my to... fight so i'm not really gonna say anything about it no, 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 I, don't no, have... I am gay i am bi and well, more I than anything say... you're an expert on slash fiction yes i am and the fact that equivalents him to a woman 
is inherently sexist. This is not really a conversation I'm 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 good to talk about because I'm just not that aware of it. But they're like, okay. And so they're at the ships. The the Trojans are burning oh, yeah, the, the palisade the, in the ships. And uh, Patroclus is like, you need to fight. I'm asking you to fight for me. Like everyone is dying. They've literally broken through the walls. Uh, the one, this one uh, Anatolian guy starts fighting in the war and like literally rips open the walls that they've built up around uh, their camp and where the ships are. The ships are on fire. And Patroclus is like sobbing because he went and he saw some of this and he comes back to Achilles and he's like, oh my God. <laughs> and Achilles is like, what's happening? buddy what's wrong and and he's like you have to do this and he's like no until agamemnon comes and begs me for it i refuse which seems so out of character considering the build-up beforehand or again when agamemnon sacrifices his daughter so that they can leave the beaches of the place where they're stuck on to appease uh the gods like to appease artemis he gave a he, sacrifice achilles was so upset like you sacrificed your daughter just like that so we could go to war like that you were so upset about but now the fact that all the greeks are dying and you won't do it until somebody comes and apologizes to you and you're just okay with that like what the fuck? he cares about it so much and then so patroclus comes up with the loophole of like i'll take your armor and we'll i'll lead the people Because like if they know if if the greeks number one if the greeks know you're there they're gonna fight harder and they're gonna feel like buoyed and the trojans will be scared of you and he's like i won't fight i won't do anything and achilles is like at first he's like no 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 and because he tells achilles he tells uh patroclus i will do anything except go and fight and so then he's like haha you said you'd do anything you're gonna have to let me do this and he's like fine but you have to stay in the uh chariot you can't go out and so patroclus puts on his armor he goes out and he starts like hefting spears and even though in the past he's been a real shaky armed like he's not very good he's suddenly throwing spears he is killing men it's almost like the prophecy living itself out which is shitty it's a shitty portrayal and it's a shitty way of writing in my opinion again it's like he's possessed and he's fighting and he's fighting and he kills sarpedian another son of zeus like the second best fighter that the trojans have like it's which nothing is, yeah it's weird yeah. and then he's like no i can't stop and so he goes up to the walls of troy and he starts climbing them and then apollo is literally at the top literally apollo and he's like nope, nope not for you and he picks him up and drops him we're not we're not like doing the funny we've, talk and we've never seen the, we've never seen one of the gods before outside of Thetis, but again, he literally just like, he's like, I'm climbing, I'm climbing. And then he's like, I thought I was climbing, but suddenly I was back on the ground. And he looks up and there's Apollo again, like, not today, bro. And he he goes back up again and Apollo throws him down. And you're like, what the fuck was that? A what? literal oh. deus ex machina. And then, and then his mask falls off and everyone realizes he's not Achilles. And then Hector kills him. And then Hector kills him. And then- So fucking- dumb if you know how the the story works you know from the beginning that patroclus is supposed to die right and you think to yourself this book told in first person from patroclus's point of view how is it going to continue after the death of patroclus guys i have to get off in 15 minutes okay we're, we're almost done we're almost anyway done. so uh it, and how it happens is patroclus's ghost because to fully put a greek spirit to death uh you have to properly take care of the body you have to bury it and have a grave with a name on it otherwise they will just wander around as a lost ghost and so because nobody has done that patroclus and is just wandering around and so he is suddenly it starts narrating what's happening to achilles and all of that and there's also no emotion though he's just telling what happens on screen like a cctv it's yeah. not like his and so i was like this is weirdly long for falling action yes and um and achilles like doesn't burn his body or do anything to take care of like there's literally like, he three just days lets him rot in, in his bed for like several in weeks, his bed which i like personally because no shows. i do like the things that happen are what happen in the iliad um he uh except okay achilles goes and fights the river scamander who's a demigod weird random you're like okay whatever he kills hector he then um Hector's dad comes in because he won't bury Hector's body first. And he dragged him. He drags him behind and he does it. And the Greeks are like, that's not good. Priam comes. He says, hey, let me bury my child. They're in the actual Trojan Iliad. It's a nice scene because it's like we're both grieving and it's different types of grieving. And it's a it's actually kind of cathartic because you, you realize, OK, like he killed his son. The, they are now even almost in a way. Um, and he now understands he now understands grief from like a father's and a more mature perspective. So that's kind of here a little bit. It's not as good as in the original. But it also makes him realize that he needs to actually take care of uh, 
Patroclus's body. Yeah. So he finally burns him and he says to everyone, when I die, mix our ashes together. Eventually, like, he keeps fighting, but he's, like, he's not even wearing armor. His hair's unkempt. Like, he's really letting himself go. Uh, and then eventually, like, Paris kills him. Apollo's there, touches the tip of the thing. He's dead. And then they're like, okay, we're gonna bury, bury them, them together. together. Like, and yes. then all of a sudden, his son, Pyrrhus? Pi yeah. Pyrrhus shows up. a piece of fucking shit. Pyrrhus is his son that he had with uh, Deidamia, who Thetis, uh, when this all happened, said, I will take the son and I will raise it uh, myself. And she raised a sociopath. Uh, and Thetis is like, because uh, everybody's like, we're going to bury them together. We're going to make a monument and it'll have both of their names on it. Curious is like, no, my father doesn't need to be, my father doesn't need to be sullied by having a mortal's name next to his. Fuck that guy. And so everybody's <laughs> like, you're right. You get to speak for your father, even though your father literally had us mix their ashes. Their ashes are already mixed at this point, but no, we're not going to put his name. And so Achilles' spirit gets put to rest because he's now in a thing uh, with his name like, on but it. But Patroclus has to wander around and, being and eventually, like, So they're going to leave. And then um, uh, Patroclus goes to Odysseus and like, bury me there. And Odysseus like kind of makes half a hearted attempt, but that doesn't work. So they leave. And then... It's, all the Greeks are gone. All the Greeks are gone, but Thetis, Katie left. Goodbye, Katie. Um, but yeah, so uh, Thetis shows up and, and is like staring at Achilles' grave a lot, and then so finally Patroclus and Thetis have a conversation. Yeah, because he speaks his her, his spirit speaks to her, and she like seems to hear him, but then fucks off. But she keeps coming back day after day, and she he keeps being like, "Yo, Thetis, I'm here." And eventually they have a conversation, and in the conversation she's like, "Well, you knew my son." Like, and they basically get to the point where he's like, "You didn't really know your son," and because she's like, "He's like, why aren't you spending time with your beloved shitty Pyrrhus?" And <laughs> uh, she's like, "Well, he's dead, so you know <laughs> that that happened. Uh, none of my sons turned out that great, apparently." And and he, she's he's like, "You didn't actually know what Achilles wanted. You didn't know him." And she's like, "So tell me." And so and the book goes, and I told her this, this, and this. And the thing is. This is how this book should have happened. Get ready Amen. for my hottest take, guys. The book should have opened with Patroclus and Thetis having this conversation of her saying, him saying, you didn't really know your son, and her going, you should, well, then tell me. And the entire book is him telling her their story together. And this would have done two things. Number one, it would have positioned Thetis and uh Patroclus's ending mm -hmm. as a climax, like the final thing, it would have presented that from the beginning and it would have presented their relationship as integral to the story. But number two, what it would have done was anyone who knows the actual story would have gone, why is Patroclus alive and talking to Thetis? Mm. If Achilles is dead, Patroclus should also be dead. And so you, as a reader who knows the story, would be like, mm, oh, how is tension. she changing this? Mystery. What is the tension? What is the mystery? Why is Patroclus alive? And then you get to the end, and then you realize, oh, shit. He's been dead the whole time. This is his him giving the story to Thetis to give her a piece of her son. And that would have just been so much cooler. Do you know how much that could have retextualized the whole story? And and also, again, put Thetis and him at the heart of it, which because mm -hmm. that's how they end. It ends with her hearing this whole thing and then writing. Because at one point she says, look, I've done it. And he looks and she's written his name on the thing. And he's finally able to go into the underworld. And the thing is, she can't go to the underworld. That's the thing. Yes. She can't see Achilles once he's dead. And so it would have been a beautiful, like, I give you that. I give my son that. That thing I can't, can't do. have. I can never see him right. again. It I can been never beautiful. see either of my sons again. But you can go and you can comfort my son. He is waiting for you. Like, and to have, like, and the thing is, it would have been great. You could even do the wham thing where it's like, it was past tense, past tense, past tense. And then all of a sudden, and after he dies, bam, it's present, present tense. tense. And, and you're like, see, <gasps> like, oh my God, it would have been so good. Yeah. And you also could have had a point where like uh, maybe Achilles, if you had presented him differently from the beginning where he was bloodthirsty and really into glory, where there was a point where um, Thetis was trying to avoid him going to Troy and uh, Patroclus also wanted to avoid him going to Troy. So even though they still hate each other at this point, they work together on this like shaky alliance because they both don't want him to die. And like that for the rest of the book, they're both motivated by through protecting them, sometimes at odds with each other and mm -hmm. how they want to protect them. But it would have given their relationship an oomph instead of just being mama, like leave the door open. I don't want you to <laughs> sleep with him. It's such a better way of doing it. And it would have re so Celia says, and I not to like toot my own horn, but Celia says, Maria's 
idea would have also added something, add something to the original yeah. text. This book doesn't engage enough with its source, uh, but this would actually say something and have a theme. That is the biggest problem with this book is that the only thing it adds to the text is wish fulfillment. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, Miss Ali Snow says, and we could have also had flashback back and forth from their childhood in the war instead of waiting yeah. for it to last. Because if he's telling her, she could be going, he could be going back and forth and being like, so he could have been telling her about the war and then interluding cuts into mm -hmm. their childhood at the same time. No, it's so much better. And again, my problems with this book is that it adds nothing because she has nothing to say. There is This is not a unique view on the Trojan War. This is her wish fulfillment fanfic. And that's all it is. I've talked before about the thing that really makes me angry is not bad books. It's people thinking a bad book is good or a mediocre book is good. And that I think is why I'm so infuriated with this book is because people think it's good. I'm also infuriated because I had to listen to it and it was like 30 hours of just them not shutting up about how pretty Achilles is and Poltroka is having no personality whatsoever. This is such an incredibly poor attempt at writing this story. So again, I'm going to go back to what I said in the beginning. There is an intended audience for this and we are not it. And most of our patrons were not it. We were here. Most adults aren't it for the record. We were here for the retelling, the recontextualization, the engaging, like, like, what does it mean to be a godson? What does it mean to be disconnected from human, like not fully human, not fully God? Like, what does that mean? You're part of two worlds and yet part of neither. And how does a mortal fit into that and love that? Like, it, that is fascinating. That's what I was here for. This book doesn't do that. This book is just a, it is a slash retelling romance, but the kind of romance where you're just supposed to. And I talked about this with um, The Wrath and the Dawn. The Wrath and the Dawn. I said this in The Wrath and the Dawn, where there are some romance readers where you tell them that these two characters, like they know that that these two characters are going to fall in love and so they just buy in they they automatically buy in and they're just looking for the later drama they don't need to see the characters fall in love and this book does that it is utilizing that trope of a romance and so in a lot of ways it is just trying to be a romance within the backdrop a, a vague backdrop of a greek retelling and um the trojan war and the trojan war is badly misused in it for me and a lot again a lot of people really love this and i get why i really do i'm not trying to take it from you I'm i not, am he is that's fine welcome to unresolved textual tension hi i'm maria this is will like, this is the tension this is textual this is unresolved this and I, it is unresolved there have been books we've read that are bad that I don't want to take from people. This book I do. This book has the temerity to go after, the caucasity to go after and ruin, ruin a great work of literature. That This is not Akatar, which is just like fairy porn that like whatever, it, it came from her own mind. No, she looked at a statue and was like, if I deface it, I can get people to think, not even, because that would have been okay. It would have been okay if she had wanted glory. She didn't. She just wanted her stupid wish fulfillment bullshit. So she looked at the statue and she was like, I'm going to pee all over it. Just defile it in its bones. Are you done? For now. Okay. I hate this book, guys. He really does. And so again, those of you who started this book... Uh, or who came into this and were like, maybe they're going to... like I, If we weren't clear enough in the beginning, this wasn't for us. You Rage! Like Go off screen. <laughs> You're allowed to like this book if you liked it. A lot of people did. A lot of people I respect did. And while I, it's so not for me and I have so many issues with it, that is fine. Books are subjective. I'm sure a lot of people who really enjoyed it are going to look at us and be like, y'all are cray. You obviously missed the point. And that's fair. Again, I've talked about this. What point? Get off screen. <laughs> you're like, not supposed to I'm be like here. I'm like a mother character. Yes. That's what you yeah. get, get off screen. You're not supposed to be here. There's been a lot of books I've really loved that I thought were perfect that I've read the one star reviews of, and they're just long, detailed, describing all the ways in which they think it's terrible. And I'm like, oh, God, I didn't even see that. Like, Or again, the Will's love of Dune. And uh, Will, is, Will is special in the way where he can really, really love something, and you yes. can point out all the ways that it's not good, and he'll go... Yeah, you're right. And it's, it's Katie is also like that, to be fair. Yes, that is that is very fair. And it's it's really interesting because he has that, but he can also genuinely love the crap out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so know all of you that if this is your first time ever seeing William, that as much as he is 
being so critical and raging he has also been incredibly critical of things he genuinely really loves no it's true go watch our dune video or even the last half of temerara which i i love that series but like it's not good yeah like go go just watch the dune video and you will see a man who loved a book from a child like like with all the like love and passion for it genuinely agree every time i'm like nice shit like i brought up things too that i didn't think work yes no i'm insanely critical this is just how i am it's just that my anger in this one is pure rip and tear until it is done yeah also our patrons are calling it the swilliad um (laughs) which i think is i think it is appropriate i I do think she's a decent writer i do think she's a decent writer and i think this isn't good i think she'll probably put out a book that we can read at some point and we'll enjoy she takes 10 years to write Cersei is like took 10 years to write and I hear that's sort of better but also not. She's desecrating the Tempest next, so I'd actually be interested to see what she does with that. Maybe we'll I wouldn't, read that one. I, I, I don't know that we're going to read She's going to turn Caliban into like ooh, soft emo boy. soft boy and That's it. I think we've been very clear. I think we've had some good analysis and discussion of how things could have worked better uh or at least for us. Again, if you love this book, I'm not coming at it. This video isn't for you. This video is for the other people who read it and went, what happened? What What is this? That I'm is coming for you. Sure. That's it. You got to raise your standards. Uh, I Swillow, who I love, uh, says, I like Cersei, but we all know <laughs> how my taste is. I Swillow, just enjoy what you like, please. Uh, please get rid of the gimmick and make new characters. Yes. That's actually a really good point. Sometimes- and also, um, Mary Renault. Apparently, she does like the gay Greek stuff much better. So. Maybe we'll read that at some point to compare and contrast, though I can't imagine any comparison would be kind to this book. I think if you looked at a turd, you would be like, oh, the interesting Okay, 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 okay. All right, bye, guys. All right, we love you, bye.